NBC Sports presents the American League champion Minnesota Twins against the National League champion St. Louis Cardinals in Game 5 of the 1987 World Series. And this ABC Sports exclusive is being brought to you by Chevrolet, the official car and truck of Major League Baseball. By Budweiser, Beachwood Age, for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. By AT&T, the right choice. And by Aetna and its agents and brokers across America. Work with the best in the business. Aetna. And as we join you, the St. Louis Cardinals take the field with Ozzie Smith doing his patented flip as we get set for Game 5 of the World Series. With the series tied at two games apiece, and tonight's lineup for Minnesota, Dan Gladden is in left field leading off. Then Greg Gagne hits second. As usual, Kirby Puckett is in the three spot. And the left-hand batting, Ken Herbeck bats fourth against the right-hander, Danny Cox. Gary Gaetti hits fifth. Tom Brunanski is in right field. Tim Laudner does the catching and bats seventh. At second base tonight will be Steve Lombardozzi, and the Minnesota pitcher is the right-hander, Burt Blylevin. And for the Cardinals defensively, it's Coleman, McGee, and Kurt Ford in the outfield. Jose Akendo moves in to play third tonight. Ozzie Smith at short, Tommy Hur at second, and Dan Dreesen at first. Tony Pena does the catching. Danny Cox is on the mound. Al Michaels along with Jim Palmer and Tim McCarver. Game five of the World Series. Off day tomorrow in game six in Minnesota. A day game at 3.30 Eastern time on Saturday. If a seventh game is necessary at the Metrodome, on Sunday night at 8 o'clock Eastern Time. Danny Cox is on the mound. Let's get the inside pitch on him from National League batting champion Tony Gwynn of the Padres. When you look at Danny Cox's motion, you think every pitch is going to be a fastball. But in reality, he throws three different pitches, the fastball, the breaking ball, and the changeup. And I think the contact hitter has a better chance of putting the ball in play against him because he can wait just a little bit longer. Whereas a guy who's looking to try to drive the ball out of the ballpark, he's going to be fooled more times than not because, like I said, every pitch looks like a fastball. And Danny Cox working tonight now on three days rest in what amounts to, Jim, a rematch of game two. Certainly is. And that rematch, or the original game, ended with Bly Levin besting Cox. Eight to four, Burt pitched seven innings. Six hits, eight strikeouts, and Danny Cox departed in the fourth inning, made a series of bad pitches in that fourth inning. Six run inning as it was early. before that, pitched pretty well. Gaetti hit a hanging slider for the only run up to that point. But he is a control pitcher and a third straight time with three days rest. He's been four and one when he's had to do that, only won 11 games all year. So I actually think this is going to help his control. Loves the pitch here, six and three this year at home. Losing record on the road. And it's conceivable he could come back with two days rest and pitch in game seven. At least give Whitey a few innings, four or five, on Sunday if there is a seventh game. But right now, let's find out about game five of the 1987 World Series with Dan Glad to start things off. Gagney and Puckett to follow. It's much warmer tonight. We've had temperatures in the mid-40s. Tonight, it's up to 60. It was very windy today, but that has died down as well. Ken Kaiser of the American League is the plate umpire along with the rest of the crew. And here we go as we start with a strike. Gladden, 5 for 18 in the World Series. Dan, the leadoff hitter in his first year with Minnesota and the speediest of the Twins. And Cox's 0-1 pitch is outside. One and one to count. Twins winning the first two games in the series at home. Cards winning the next two. The home team has won every game in the World Series. No World Series has ever gone the distance with the home team winning all. That's grounded to Smith. Pat did Ozzie play. One away. So Gladden taken care of, and Greg Gagne is the batter. Gladden hits this ball very well, and Ozzie Smith one step to his right, and a rather routine play. And again, they all seem routine when he makes them. I mean, he really, really literally, does. that's the one constant thing about the Cardinals. Don't hit a lot, 
pitching has been shaky the first two games. Very good the last two, but their de defense has been outstanding. And wasn't that the case last night in what could have been a, a twin threat to get back in the game in the fifth inning? But Smith and Coleman making scintillating plays. It's grounded down to Tommy Hur. And Gackney is the second out. Quickly, two down here in the first inning. And Kirby Puckett is the batter. The one thing that these two teams really do have in common, great defense. The Twins led the majors this year. They made only 98 errors. And the Cardinals, of course, when you've got Ozzie Smith, and normally Terry Pendleton the third, as was the case during the regular season, and people like Tommy Hearn, and Willie McGee patrolling the outfield, the Cardinals made only 116 errors. Kirby Puckett. And that's, that's fascinating when you think about it. I didn't realize that until the graphic came up. Been a slow start each night. Strike. 0 and 1. Twins would now be a collective 0 for 14 in the first inning of the World Series. And then, of course, there's the fourth. Danny Cox with the 0 1 pitch. He works it in on him. They've been pitching Puckett inside the entire series, and he is 4 for 17 as a result. After a half, Minnesota nothing, Cardinals coming up. Toyota. It's advertised as who could ask for anything more. Nissan. They say it makes you feel like driving. Honda states that they make it simple. So why are so many of these make it simple, who could ask for anything more, make you feel like driving automobiles being traded in on the new four-door Chevy Corsica and the new Chevy Beretta Coupe? Time marches on. I'm here for some straight talk about the stock market. It's important to everyone. It provides capital that creates jobs to make America grow. Emotions can run high during market turbulence, just when reason should prevail. We are confident in the markets. We've stayed active in them for all investors. America's economy is the strongest in the world with great ability to bounce back. At Merrill Lynch, we're still bullish on America. When Bill Demby was in Vietnam, he dreamed of coming home and playing a little basketball. A dream that all but died when he lost both legs to a Viet Cong rocket. But then researchers discovered that a DuPont plastic could help make truly lifelike artificial limbs. Now Bill's back, and some say he hasn't lost a step. At DuPont, we make the things that make a difference. Better things for better living. Every 10 seconds of every hour of every business day, America puts a brand new Epson computer or printer to work. Imagine that. Businesses of every kind and size putting the power of Epson into millions of hands. Every 10 seconds, another new Epson. It's true. When you've got an Epson, you've got a lot of company. For the St. Louis Cardinals tonight, their lineup looks like this. Coleman to lead off, and Smith and Hur. Dreesen is the cleanup hitter with McGee batting fifth. Kurt Ford is in right. Okendo is at third. Tony Pena drops to eight. Danny Cox is the pitcher. And that lineup will be facing right-hander Burt Blylevin. 5-0 and oh in postseason games through his career. The inside pitch on Burt from Paul Molitor of the Brewers. What makes Burt so difficult to face is that he never really develops a pattern against any certain hitter. He can throw his fastball or curveball any time during the count. Now he likes to keep the right-handed hitter honest by throwing that fastball in, which makes his curveball even more effective. Now to approach a guy like Burt, you basically have to concede one of the two pitches early in the count. But if he gets the two strikes, of course you have to just protect the plate. Paul had arthroscopic surgery this afternoon on his, or a couple of days ago, I should say, on his right elbow to remove a floating bone chip. He's resting comfortably at home in San Diego, and we hope you get well. What a remarkable job 
Paul Molitor and Tony Gwynn have done, giving us the lowdown on the pitchers in this series. Absolutely. A batting champion and a man who captured everybody's fancy this summer with the Brewers with a 39-game hitting streak. So I guess you'd expect it from both of them, yeah. right? <laughs> Vince Coleman to lead things off, and Coleman takes a strike. Coleman, Smith, and Her here in the first inning with no score. I think an interesting point that Paul Molitor brought up was conceding one pitch. We saw up in Minnesota, it looked like he conceded the fastball, struck out the first time on one, but looked for the curveball, hit it hard the second time. Tonight, first pitch, curveball, he took it right down the middle. 0-2 oh the count. Now back of Blylevin defensively, Gladden, Puckett, Brunanski, the infield, Gaetti, Gagne, Lombardozzi, and Herbeck with Laudner catching and Blylevin pitching, and the only change they've made for the first five games Last night, Newman started at second. One and two the count on Coleman. Top of the order last night did a decent job for the Cardinals. Coleman got on twice, Smith once, her four times. But for the most part, it's been tough sledding for them because the top three, Coleman, Smith, and her, are a collective nine for 47. Well, it's even more important for Burt Wylevin to keep the first three Cardinals off because they're the bulk of their running attack. And his one weakness other than home runs, that's 46, is he gives up a lot of stolen bases of second base. Good breaking pitch. But also strikes out a lot of batters. Struck out eight Cardinals in the second game in seven innings and this is how he does it shows you enough fastballs to keep you honest and then the great curveball unhittable I was just thinking the term good breaking pitch is really a redundancy with Bly Levin <laughs> <laughs> one and the same Ozzie Smith the switch hitting shortstop one and the count a lot of American League hitters will tell you they like to just look for the fastball because they figure if he's got his good curveball, you can't hit it even if you look for it. So you might as well look for something you can hit. And you can't adjust to the fastball if you're looking for the local. The local being the breaking ball. You can, however, adjust to the curveball if you're looking for the fastball. Another curve in the count. One and two. So if he has his good curveball, you're not going to hit it anyway. So, I mean, that's a given. Uh, and... I believe from hitting off him in the 79 World Series. I mean, I hit one with a warning track. I figured that was a, like a base hit. <laughs> Smith hits a fastball down a second. And Lombardozzi throws out Ozzy. Two down here in the bottom of the first inning. And that will bring up Tommy Herr. I mean, why look for something you can't hit? Whether it's the position of the pitch or a particular pitch. If you, as a hitter, and most hitters are weak on balls up and in and down and away, why look for those particular pitches? Especially when you have the count in your favor. And that's a big, big part of hitting, having the count in your favor. And that's why it's so important from a pitching standpoint to stay ahead. Fly 11 starts in arrears, missing up and away, and the count 1-0 on Tommy Herr. Two out, bases empty, bottom of the first inning, no score on a beautiful night in St. Louis. Temperature 60 degrees, and it's calm. Calm right now. Yeah. <laughs> and one thing we know for certain is that after tonight, one team will be one game away from the world title. Now, those are the flags at the top of the stadium. Just a little bit of a breeze. It was really blowing downtown today at about... Two, three o'clock, but it's calmed down. Two and one, the count on Tommy Herr. And that's his third pitch. Two and oh, you're going to look fastball, curveball, and what does he throw you? A changeup. So he's shown the Cardinals all his pitches. Been a factor of a lot of runs in postseason play this year. He two, two and oh in the playoffs, six and nine runs in those games, and then he got eight runs in game two. So they've supported him well. Toward the middle. By Lombard Dozy throws him out. Great play by Steve. And at the end of one, no score in game five.
Scotty Lynn on deck. The 1-0 delivery to Fisk. He swings. Long drive. Left field. If it stays there. They begin so small. And the game is so hard. But they have an incredible secret advantage. They have such heroes to inspire them. Edna is proud to sponsor the 84th encounter between the best in the business and the best in the business. The heroes of October are with us again. Dylan taking his best shot at the big time. Don't get your hopes up, kid. Jen, Phil. Matt Dillon is the Flamingo Kid Friday. Sunday on Disney. My son happens to be a dog. Get me out of here. There is something about you lately. Sunday. Follow that dog. The conclusion of the original Shaggy Dog. making a great play to end at the bottom of the first inning. So each team goes out one, two, three, and we go to the second. Tell you, for middle infielders, you have to have more range on the artificial surface. Lombardozzi making a fine, fine play. Uh, and actually on, on natural grass, he's able to get in front of that ball and make a much easier play because the ball doesn't pick up speed, but it does on the rug. Good play. Ken Herbeck now in the second inning. Herbeck, Gaetti, and Brunanski. Twins would like to get a little more punch out of their three and four hitters. Puck at four for 17. Herbeck three for 13. And now three for 14 as Dreesen takes care of him unassisted. One up and one down in the second inning, and Gary Gaetti comes to the plate. Well, three out of four balls hit well tonight, but then again, Donnie Danny Cox is not an overpowering pitcher most of the time. 199 innings pitch. He gave up 224 hits. But what he does do is throw some ground balls, and he's thrown three out of four grounders tonight, something he didn't do that well up in the Metrodome. Got the ball up in the strike zone. That's not where he can be. Once to this guy, Gary Gaetti, who put the Twins on the board with the home run against Cox in game two. One out, base is empty, and Gaetti takes a strike. 0-1. Cox back in April pitched a complete game with no walks or strikeouts. So he at 6'4", 225, he looks intimidating. And he can be because he's not afraid to come inside, but he is not an overpowering pitcher. He relies on movement of the ball. Quickly 0-2. Movement of the ball, and also he jumps at the hitter. That's why Tony Gwynn Talked about every pitch looking like a fastball. Well, this is a fastball, but an excellent location, and it ties Gary Gaetti up. That's out of play. Still 0-2. Uh, something I'm sure we can isolate as the game goes, but Mike Rourke, the pitching coach with the Cardinals, said the whole key to Cox's delivery is his left elbow. If he keeps it nice and loose, then he's going to have good stuff and good command of his pitches. If he jerks it close to his side, what happens is he opens up too quickly like a hitter does, and he's already finished before the pitch has got there. He kind of every is wild away. So watch the left elbow. If it's relaxed, he's going to be on. One and two. Had you ever heard that description of a pitcher before? No, but he has a very unusual motion because he throws, as you look at Mike Rourke, who is an excellent, been rumored to be uh, in line maybe for the Cubs job. Let's take a look. I think it's a slow motion of his. Now watch his left elbow. If it gets away from his body, it's nice and relaxed. His problem is when he keeps it too, too close, he pulls himself through too quickly. Good breaking pitch. And Gaetti down on 
strikes. Pretty good little operation right there. 0-2 comes in and throws a breaking pitch away and gets him. Well, not afraid to throw the same pitch that he homered on up in the Metrodome because he knows if he's going to be successful, he's got to get the pitch in that location, and he did. So two gone, and Tom Brunanski now. Brunanski, a 259 hitter during the regular season. One and oh. Here's that Danny's trying to establish the fastball inside to the right handed hitters. That's that four and one mark we talked about. I actually think with Kenny Kaiser, and he's a very good American League umpire. You'll notice he's one of the few umpires does not get down on one knee. I mean, he'll kind of get down there, but not as low. So you're not going to get as many low strikes with Kaiser. I think he thought that the first pitch to Brunanski was a strike, but you will get more up in the strike zone. That's whacked into left field for a base hit. So Brunanski becomes the game's first base runner. A two-out single here in the second inning. His third hit of the series, and it will bring Tim Wadner to the plate. That's an interesting point, Jim, because if you were, if you had your druthers and you were a pitcher, especially a pitcher who's not an overpowering pitcher like Danny Cox, you would prefer to get the low pitch because if you're getting the fat, the fastball that's upstairs, a lot of times catchers aren't going to be uh, able to catch those. Well, they don't hit them. You just saw, which is Bernanski yeah. lining on the left, because the, the Twins are a much better high ball hitting ball club and fastball. Now Laudner with five hits in the series. He and Gladden each with five, and that's tops on the Twins. Brunanski at first base with two down. Brunanski, we mentioned last night, 11 steals, also caught 11 times. And they play a lot of hit and run with Brunanski on base. And the count 2-0. and oh. That's one reason that Brunanski, with that what you'd call blazing speed, was able to get into double figures and steals. There's Rick Rennick sending down the signs from third. really not a good running situation with a count 2-0 to Loudner. You, you want to give him a shot at pumping one out of the park or an extra base hit. Good one. That was a good pitch on which to do it, and that's why you usually don't send a runner in 3-1 and 2-0 and and oh with two outs. Dreesen holding Brunanski on. Two out with no score in the second. And three and one. Lodner, the number seven hitter, with Lombardozzi on deck. Single by Brunanski, followed by a walk to Laudner. The Twins have runners at first and second, the first threat of the game, with two out on the second inning. And Steve Lombardozzi, who is two for nine in the World Series, comes to the plate, a 238 hitter during the regular year. You saw that outstanding play that Steve Lombardozzi made. That's one of the reasons when Ray Miller was manager here last year, the year before, he saw him come up. He knew he had quick reflexes, quick feet, pretty good throwing arm said if we're going to have a good defensive ball club we're going to have to maybe make a trade Tim Tuffle went to the Mets and Lombardozzi became the second baseman because of his range not his hitting Lombardozzi a home run in game one in Minnesota he hit eight during the regular season two on two out and the pitch is strike one 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 
ball, one strike. If this was the American League or even the American League ballpark in World Series, with Okendo playing in left field, really playing a very deep third base, and Cox falling off dramatically as he does to first base, you would most likely see Lombardozzi dropping a bunt down. But with Blylevin on, on deck, he is going to swing away. In the air to shallow left, and Smith goes out. Falls, makes the play, and the Twins leave a pair in the second. After one and a half, no score in game five. You must have called it all a thousand times, but you never lost sight of the dream. I got a telegram for you, Tony. Okay, thanks, Pop. Hi, babe. Hey, guess what? I got the call. Yeah. Men majors. You got a shot, you take it. What's this, Ricky Umper? You got the heart to make it. would age for that clean, crisp taste that makes Budweiser the king of beer. Hi. Compliments from the gentleman over there. Delta Airlines flight attendant Irene Lockwood loves to fly. Are you still here? My son was supposed to meet me. Well, I'll wait with you. That kid is always late. What she loves most are the people she meets. He must have got caught in the rain. He was even born late. Ma. Irene is what Delta's all about. Irene. Yes? Are you married? Yep. Two kids. Late again, Joey. You love to fly and it shows. A simple country boy has simple needs. A house, a car, and the most advanced high-performance tires on the road. Take me where this heart began. Love to ride the same good land. That my daddy loved. The Goodyear Eagle VR was developed out of a Formula One racing tire design, and that's important, even if you're just going next door. Goodyear, take me home. Well, Tim, there have been a few strange happenings in the World Series. Tom Lawless, the most unlikely of heroes last night but one thing has gone very much according to Hoyle it's been the home field advantage for each team thus far not only a home field advantage but both teams have won four games in a row and and postseason play four for the twins and four for the Cardinals I think what's going to be a factor tonight Whitey Herzog brought up a Bach controversy with Burt Blylevin of course you have to get on and if the Cardinals get on I think we're going to see some controversy about whether he stops when he's trying to hold runners on Whitey said he balked 11 times in seven innings the other night, three times in the first first inning, and took literally took away the running game of the Cardinals. Of course, also the uh, eight run that he had by the seventh inning helped to do that. Well, the Cardinals had no base runners in the first, and now we start the second inning with those score, and Dan Dreesen to lead things off. Dreesen, McGee, and Ford. Dan Dreesen went to spring training with the Houston Astros couldn't win a job back home to Cincinnati and then the Cardinals called and he spent most of the year in Louisville one and those so here are the Cardinals in the World Series and of course uh, the Clark situation is well known Jack normally the cleanup hitter but not even on the active roster so they go with Dreesen and Lindemann rounded foul and the Cardinals in the World Series with one first baseman who spent most of the year in the minor leagues, this man, and another who's a rookie who batted 208. Reminds me, in a way, the, remember the Philadelphia Phillies in 83 went into the World Series with a uh, platoon situation. They had Sixto Lizcano as the right-handed batter. And uh, I'm trying to remember who they had in right field as the left-handed batter, but they had a platoon cleanup situation in 83. Fouled away. That was a series also that Pete Rose set out in 1983. In, in one game. In one game, Paul, yeah. Paul Owens uh, put him on a bench in, I think, the third game. 
If I hadn't been a relief pitcher in that series, I could tell you who that left-handed starter was. <laughs> I'm mulling it. <laughs> two and two the count. Thank you. Obviously, the only way I got through the two innings that I did was that I didn't have to face that guy, whoever he was. <laughs> That's right. Excuse me, whomever he was. And Dresden foul, tipping it at the plate. Still two balls and two strikes. I want some career stats on Bert Blylevin. I think a lot of people, because he's been so well traveled, started out with Minnesota, then down to Texas, Pittsburgh. He's going to quit in 1980. Won 244 games and lost 209 with an ERA just a little over three with over 3,200 strikeouts and 4,200 innings. A lot of innings, a lot of strikeouts. Hitter Catfish Hunter only won 224 games and he was named to the Hall of Fame. So take a look at the right side of the twin defense. Dreesen, it's a game. high towering drive to right field, an easy play for Tom Brunanski and one away. So Dreesen gone on a 3 2 pitch and it will bring up Willie McGee. And McGee is the only Cardinal to have hit safely in all four games thus far. He has seven hits more than any other player in the World Series thus far. Career high of 105 RBIs, and I think a lot of that is attributed to the fact that he hit behind Jack Clark, that pitched around him a lot, but also that he hit in the fifth spot for the first time this year. Strike. Or at least most of the season. I thought of the left-handed batter. Lescano was the right-handed hitter. Joe LaFay was the left-handed hitter. In 83, the old one pitch is grounded to the right side. And it's an easy play for Lombardozzi. So two gone here in the second inning. Bush Stadium from the Goodyear Blip. On a gorgeous night. Game five. And one thing for certain, this is the final baseball game of the year at Bush Stadium in St. Louis. Off day tomorrow, and then a day game, the first World Series day game in three years, coming up under the roof at the Dome, Saturday at 3.30 Eastern time. Tudor and Straker. Strike to Kurt Ford, and it's 0-1. I guess to clarify that, that home field advantage, between the Cardinals and the Minnesota Twins, they've lost only one game in postseason at home. That was when the Giants beat the Cardinals in game two here at Bush Stadium. The Cardinals won the last two here at Bush. Minnesota beat Detroit the first two at the Metrodome. Then Minnesota takes two from St. Louis. St. Louis, two from Minnesota. Home sweet home. Mm, I'll say. Well, that's why it's such an important game for the Cardinals, because they have not proven that they can win in the Metrodome. And it's obvious that the Is Twins anybody? <laughs> no, other than the Twins. That's right. No. We're talking about a 60, 60 and 25 record, and yet they're 31 and 55 on the road. And I mean, that is such an amazing disparity. And you wonder why their pitching has been a lot worse on the road. Over 100 runs given up more on the road than at home. 2-1 to Ford, missing ball three. Three and one. Cardinals in the series going with Ford and Wright and Okendo at third against the righties. And then Okendo and right, and that man lawless at third against left-handed pitching. And it's popped up. Gary Gaetti is there. And Blylevin has set down the first six at the end of two. No score. There's an advanced new shape in heavy haulers. The smooth, rounded shape of aerodynamics to cheat the wind and put more power to work. You see it in big rigs and right out front in the advanced new full-size Chevy with standard Vortec V6. Enough standard power to tow over 58 tons of these big rigs and this Ford. The heartbeat of America has today's Chevy truck. These days, computers are spewing forth a sea of information. Yet it's harder than ever to find what you need without getting swamped. But at AT&T, we can help you stay afloat. We're working to combine computers and communications so you can get the right information to the right people at the right time. As easy as using the telephone. 
AT&T, the right choice. Here's to the winners, those who move mountains. Here's to the miracles they make us see. Holiday Inn welcomes you, the people who know that winning at life is working hard at it and living it fully day after day. Here's to the winners, all of us can be. Holiday Inn salutes you. Here's to the winners. We're on your way. And let's tackle Tim Daniels' first point to score. There's only one camera system you can buy that lets you hold the picture in your hand while you still hold the feeling in your heart. The Polaroid Spectra system. Studies with people who had a heart attack or unstable angina show aspirin can help prevent a heart attack. Ask your doctor about diet, exercise, and an aspirin a day. This message from Bayer, the wonder drug that works wonders. Bush Stadium in St. Louis, Al Michaels with Jim Palmer and Tim McCarver. Tom Kelly, the 37-year-old rookie manager of the Twins, and in his first full season, you'll recall last year, he succeeded Ray Miller on an interim basis, and then they made him wait. We detailed that for seven weeks earlier in the series, talking about the fact that the Twins went managerless until Kelly was officially named the permanent manager on the 26th of November. Bert Glylevin now. Swinging and missing. Blylevin, the DH in the American League, so he hasn't hit as a twin except going back to earlier in his career and then with the Pirates in the late 70s and 1980. One and two. So he does have experience at the plate and is a lifetime 131 hitter. And we talked about it last night, the fact that Tim Stoddard got the last hit for an American League pitcher in 1979. A bad rip with two strikes, one and two. Right into our field, Mike. Well, if you're Danny Cox, you don't like that kind of swing when you're ahead one and two. Too much of the plate, not down in the strike zone. And he's struggling a little bit. Live Evan gone on strikes. That's Strikeout number two for Cox, and here's Dan Gladman. Go back to game one Saturday night in the fourth inning. When the Twins erupted for seven, and this broke it wide open with Bob Forsh on in relief of Joe McGrain, and into the seats as the Twins roll to a 10 to one victory. Glad tonight, 0 for one, grounded out in the first inning. One and oh replay of that home run to me brings uh, how big this ballpark is here. That ball might not have gone out of here. So this is a great pitcher's ballpark. Tailored for the speed of the Cardinals. 2-0. And, oh. and the power of Tom Lawless. Yes. <laughs> there he is. He played himself out of the lineup. <laughs> You touched on it, Jim. Danny Cox, even though he's held the twin scoreless through the first two and a third, is struggling. It's not really the results a lot of times, because if, if the lineup continues to hit the ball hard, you continue to fall behind. They'll get you eventually. Glad you're taking all the way in the count three and one. One out, base is empty. We're in the third inning in St. Louis in game five of the World Series with no score. And Gladden is on, and so Cox continues to struggle. In the second inning with two out, Bernanski single, the walk to Laudner, and now here in the third inning, he walks Gladden with one out, and Gagney is the batter. One of the hitters that Tom Kelly likes to hit and run with, Gladden, good speed, but one of the things that's not involved in the formula of whether you should hit and run or not is that Cox is struggling with a strike zone. He's already walked two. And you try to choose a good pitch for the hitter to hit and run with. You want a guy who's always around the plate. Danny, most of the time, he's around the plate. But tonight, he's walked two and two and a third. So maybe that'll go into Tom's thinking. Gladden at first base. One out. 
25 steals on the year, so he can run. And Pena throws well. So caught 12 times. Rick Rennick with the sign. I think Whitey Herzog is looking at this game as almost as they're trailing by one game already, and they, they want to win this game so badly because they want to avoid going to Minnesota down by one game. He's going to use his whole pitching staff for the off day tomorrow. Might see McGrain or Horton up very early. Even Warrell, even though Daly pitched three innings yesterday, I just think he has the feeling he has to win this ball game. Or he doesn't have to win it, but he'd very much like to. There he goes, and it's fouled away, and the count is 0-2. So Gladden comes back to first. No balls, two strikes, and one out. Well, when you're 6-4, what you try to do is get rid of the ball quickly. You get the ball to catcher. You give him a chance, especially a good-throwing catcher like Tony Pena. But when you're 6-4, you got a high leg kick. Uh, one of the few guys that I know in, in, in baseball that gets rid of the ball quickly right-handed is Rick Russell. And he's very hard to run on. He cuts his leg kick down, and you try to do that when you're a pitcher, especially if you're tall. on that fastball that really had a good part of the inside part of the plate. It's not that you look for a pitcher to waste one, but you kind of anticipate that he's going out of the strike zone, and a lot of times he surprises you by getting too much of the plate. That appeared to happen to Gagney then. So Cox with three strikeouts, two down, and Puckett is the batter. And there he goes. It's a good jump. Pitches outside. The throw is too late. Gladden got a great jump on Cox, and the throw was right there, but Gladden stole that one on Danny. And he's had about three or three or four pitches to time him. Right there, you can see he's not even getting the ball to home plate. If you don't get it to the catcher in 1.4 seconds and he does not release it in within two seconds of the delivery, you don't have a chance, and that's the result. Jim, were you conscious of that with a runner at first base? Well, Did I you try to like, cut down on your stride. Yes, and I, the only way to work that, you don't obviously you don't do it during the ball game if you have worked on it in between. If you're tall, you have to do that in a running situation. But you have a guy at the plate though that hit 28 home runs and hit 332, and you can't think too much about a glad and then let this guy beat you. And Kirby Puckett, we mentioned before. They've been working him in, in, and in, and they have been doing it with great success. He is four for 17, and Cox worked him inside in the first inning and got him to pop out. All the hits he's got away, Al, all the hits he's gotten yet are away. When they get ahead of him, they come inside. Starts him low and away. Now, I think he walked 32 times, over 600 times at bat, so it gives you an idea. He's a pretty aggressive hitter, and you see from that stat over the course of his career, He's up there to swing. But if you talk to any Minnesota coach, they'll say when he's hot, it doesn't matter if he expands the strike zone. He's not hot now. Well, they had those two days in Milwaukee this year. 10 for 10, six, six for six, then came back to the next ball game and got four more hits. And that tells you, it's the same thing with Ken Herbeck. I, I think, Timmy, you would know more than I do. You, you talk to hitters when they're not seeing the ball well, that's exactly what they'll say. I'm not hitting because I, I'm not picking the ball up when it comes out of the pitcher's hand. And I wouldn't think there's any reason for Cox to pitch around Puckett. And he gets the green light, 3 and all, and grounds it down to Okendo. Twins done in the third, no score at the end of two and a half back after this word from your local station. Friday, a major 2020 investigation reveals the truth about the Marine Barracks bombing in Beirut, how our government could have done more to prevent it. Watch 2020 Friday. Daughter certainly is outgoing. Mind if I take a crack at her? Brian Keith. Yes. yes. And Paul Provenza, The Pursuit of Happiness, premieres Friday, October 30th. It has helped solve water problems for entire cities. Time to brush your teeth, kiddo. Okay, Mom. It is a worldwide leader in fluid technology. Brian, I'm blushing! 
Water has created the world's largest submersible pumping station with the capacity to handle 370 million gallons per day. One gallon at a time. Brian! It is the Fluid Technology Corporation of ITT. A new ITT, building businesses into leaders. This is how you say high performance in Italian. And in German. And in American. And this is how you say higher performance. High octane Chevron Supreme with Tecrolin cleans complete fuel intake systems for higher performance cars like yours. Lethal Weapon. It's a high voltage thriller that packs a wallet, says the New York Times. I didn't know that. Lethal Weapon just won't quit. So good, it'll be the standard for action films all year long, says critic Joel Siegel. Gene Shalit calls Lethal Weapon riveting. Keep talking. Mel Gibson, Danny Glover. Suppose we better register you as a Lethal Weapon. Lethal Weapon, still this year's number one action movie. Bring it home on video cassette from Warner Home Video. Buy your 3D glasses at a 7-Eleven before October 29th. Well, the Major League Mark most wins without a loss in postseason play. Lefty Gomez, the Yankees, with six. Jack Holmes, who pitched with the A's and Dodgers in the period between 1910 and 16 with five. Per Pennock of the Yankees, five. And then Burt Blylevin. The other three, of course, did it all in World Series play. There were no such things as League Championship Series until 1969. But Blylevin in postseason play with a mark of five and all. Well, there's always been a knock that he hasn't been able to win the close games. The only one, 14 one, one to nothing victories. I mean, we're looking at a guy that has Hall of Fame credentials, and they do look at postseason play. Jose Oquendo, the batter, and the count one and one. Chance to win 300 games because he seems like he 15 wins this year, 17 last year. As we said, over 3,000 strikeouts. He said his goal is 300 wins and 5,000 innings. He has 244 lifetime victories at the age of 36. See, he's mixing his pitches. I think I'm more concerned with the pitch count. Change up, which is his third pitch, he's used very effectively when he's been behind. That's Luke down the line and left for a base hit, and maybe more. Gladden cuts it off, and Okendo takes the big turn and holds. Jose Okendo with the Cardinals' first hit. You saw Okendo grimace with that right shoulder. Gene Gieselman, the trainer of the Cardinals, told me he injured that shoulder last night, diving into foul territory, attempting to make a catch on a ball. A terrific play by Dan Gladden, especially since the ball got out there so quickly. This ball hit sharply. You can tell by the spin it's cutting away from Gladden, and Danny made a nice play, but Okendo really looks in pain. Still grimacing at first base as Pena stands in. Jose away to his lead with nobody out in the bottom of the third inning. Good sweeping curve on one. Well, that's the one that Paul Molitor said gets you back on your heels, and you saw a perfect example of it. Tony thinks the ball is up and in, and all of a sudden it's low and in the middle of the plate for strike one. Okendo in motion here. Matter of fact, Okendo and Pena last night worked the hit and run successfully before Lawless hit the home run, but it was reversed. Okendo was the hitter and Pena the runner. Flylevin, as the graphic told you, is able to induce a lot of double plays in addition to giving up home runs. Second most in the American League, only Mark Gubaza got more. A lot of times, if the base runner at first base isn't sure that the sign is on, he picks it up from the first base coach. One wink means you're stealing. Two winks means the hit and run is on. 
And don't get any dust in your contact list. That's right. Rich Hacker picks the sign up from Nick Labor, the third base coach. And he may have already given it to Okendo. One wink from the first base coach to the runner to steal. Two winks to hit and run. Nothing doing here, and it's a strike. One and two. Still waiting for a wink, a blink, or a nod. There he goes, and the pitch is grounded into right field for a base hit. And Okendo is on his way to third. With a count one and two, do you think that Whitey Herzog would dare hit and run with Pena? Maybe. Well, Blylevin's been around the plate all night, and, yeah. and again, Pena's strength is that he can expand the strike zone. You see Okendo break. Pena doesn't care if it's a ball or a strike because that's the way he swings whether anybody's on or not. It's a perfect situation with a guy that looks like he's around the plate and has command of his pitches. The only problem you have is if he strikes out. It is an interesting point because I remember Dick Grote telling me, and Dick Grote used to put his own hit and run play on. Dick told me that the best hit and run count was one ball and two strikes because that was the pitch in the situation where the pitcher wanted to get you out the most and finish you off. So it makes sense that Whitey Herzog from the old school, and certainly Dick Grote was from that school, and certainly they hit and ran then. First and third, nobody out, and Danny Cox up there to swing away takes high, ball one. What a go. The least likely thing you would think here with nobody out is a squeeze. Far more likely than that if he's bunting is a bunt to get the runner from first to second, or he could be up there to swing away. Okendo is at third, Pena held on by Herbeck at first. I like the bunt situation now because you stay out of the double play with the next batter, you, especially with a strikeout victim strikeout pitchers pitcher up of the plate but and there we see the first strike so I think you just it's a it's the right thing to do whether he'll do it or not I'm not really sure well that's an arguable point Jim because I'll tell you a double play scores a run also and well, if, they, if they had a power hitter or a guy who could hit a fly ball deep to the outfield coming up next then I'd agree with you but not with Vince Coleman on deck maybe bluff Coleman can't really drive the ball, but he is a contact hitter. And if Cox did bunt, it would be interesting to see if Kelly brought the left side of the infield in because Coleman was the hitter. That's foul back. Good oh. rip. On the subject of contact hitters, what about Danny Cox? He was up 69 times this year. And he struck out only 25 times. I say only because for a pitcher, that's not too bad. That means you do make pretty good contact. Well, here's a pitch he has to hit because he's going to see a curveball. He gets a fastball. Most likely that's what he's looking for. He's just looking for the ball. And now, old Uncle Charlie. And as we said, Blylam has a great curveball, and he is a strikeout pitcher. And he's up there to bunt and lays it down. for the out at first base. Okendo has to hold at third. <laughs> well, you never know what Herzog's going to do. He swings away, swings away, and then with two strikes, he butts, and the bases were almost loaded. Well, but they he get him that? first. He wants to stay away from the strikeout, and he probably knows something that we may not know, that Danny Cox is a good butter. If that's the case, why is he butting up to two strikes? If he fouls this ball off, it's a strikeout. That's the second time that something happened with the count one and two. Maybe that's a secret mm -hmm. combination. I don't know. But it's a blueprint. And the Twins are lucky to get one out here. Laudner going for it, but Blylevin picks it up, and Herbeck has to retreat the first and get on the bag. Okendo at third, and down at second is Pena. Now the Twins have Gaetti playing up even with a bag, but they've got Gagne playing back short and Lombard Doji back at second with Herbeck up at first. So up at the corners and back in the middle with Coleman at the plate. Grounding it to Gagney and he's going to come home and he 
gets him. So Gagne, despite playing deep, and that time, I think what Okendo had to think about as he was dancing off third was the fact Gaetti might have come up with a ball. And had Gary come up with it, he was thinking about staying at third. Here it is. You see, he thinks the third baseman, Gaetti, is going to come up with it, and that enables Gagne to be playing deep and still get him. That's exactly right. And with runners on second and third, if you're the runner on third base, you can't worry about the third baseman fielding the ball because you can always get in a rundown. Watch the jump Okendo gets. The first move is staying there. If, if Gaetti comes up with the ball, you can always stop before you get to the catcher. But Gagne makes a very heads-up play. And that's a play that's more conducive to the rug than natural grass because the ball gets to you in a hurry. Smith, outside ball one. So the Twins were ready to concede a run on a grounder to short. And the next thing you know, because of the indecision of Okendo, they're able to throw him out at home in a heads-up play by Gagne, of course. That's a contact play where if the ball is put on the ground, the runner runs regardless to what infielder or pitcher. And you can always stop to give the runners a chance to move up. 2-0 on Smith. And if you're wondering why he may be pitching to so carefully to Ozzie Smith, well, he hit 335 from the left side, but normally he's been able to get him out. He faced him 14 times in the National League, struck him out seven times, and this is a contact hitter. So you think he'd be aggressive, and he is. But he grabs one down a second, and Lombardozzi throws him out. Ron Levin works out of it. Cards leave a pair, no score, going to the fourth. The outlook for financial markets is encouraging. Interest rates are now declining, and the fear of significantly higher inflation seems unwarranted. Government officials appear ready to achieve stability in the dollar. This is good news. And the message from the financial markets to policymakers is clear. Address the budget and trade deficits. At Merrill Lynch, we are confident, indeed optimistic, about the resiliency of the financial markets and the environment ahead for investors. Plus has a lubricating comfort strip to give you a smooth touch, an easy touch that's more comfortable than ever. A touch this easy makes me understand. When it comes to love, I want to slow it. The new Chic Plus for the easy touch. There's a vacancy at the Bates Motel. Buzz McKenzie, and it could be you. Look for this display and enter Bud Light Psycho Sweepstakes to win a Bud Light party with Spud McKenzie at the Psycho Mansion. You can even get a mug like Spud's at participating retailers. Wow! That Spud's is so cool, it's scary. ABC Sports presents an international event as two teams square off in an historic basketball meeting. The Soviet national team takes the court as they face their first challenge ever by an NBA squad. Their opponent, the Milwaukee Bucks. It's the McDonald's Basketball Open live Sunday on ABC Sports. This ABC Sports exclusive is being brought to you by Budweiser. Beachwood age toward that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. Cox, through three, has allowed one hit. He has walked two and struck out three. Well, not that many pitches, Al, but, but from watching him and, and being a former pitcher, I under, he is struggling only in the sense that I bet it feels like he's already in the sixth inning because it's not smooth three innings. Fourteen uh, pitches an inning is not a whole lot. Ken Herbeck having a tough postseason. Three for 14 in the World Series strike on a change and it's one and one. I believe that's the first change he's thrown tonight. Now in the second game with the bases loaded he threw three in a row to Randy Bush. He hit the third one down the right field line for a double to really put him out of the game quickly. 
two and one. Jim, you and I were talking to Jim Fergosi, his old manager. He had Danny Cox and a lot of the players, the Cardinals, yesterday in the hotel lobby, and we were talking about that thing, the three straight changes to Randy Bush. Danny said, never again. Well, you learn from your mistakes, and I think that's one thing that Mike Rourke emphasized yesterday was we sat down with Danny. He realizes what he didn't do right in game two. Uh, he's not on the top of his game, but he has shut him out for three innings, even though he's three and one on Herbeck right here. And Herbeck hits it sharply in the right for a base hit. So the Twins get the leadoff man on, and up comes Gary Gaetti. Now look at Mike Rourke, and the other night it was Danny Cox in a faithful fourth inning when the Twins got six, and he was bombed as the Twins were en route to an 8-4 victory and a Cox loss on Sunday as Gaetti gets ready to stand in. Meanwhile, Cox, a couple of dubious marks were tied the other night. Most earned runs allowed in the game. A mark set by Three Finger Brown back in 1910. And most earned runs allowed in an inning, Hooks Wilsey back in 1911. So a couple of marks that had been on the books for a long, long time. Tied by Danny huh. Cox. And of course, uh, with Herbeck in first base and nobody out in the fourth inning, Cox trying to forget all about the fourth the other night. The mention of three Fringer of Brown brings up one of the more interesting questions posed this year. Ron Simmons, the great voice of the Oakland A's, mused one night this summer. How would three Fringer Brown have handled the high five? <laughs> the 0-1 pitch is grounded to third. Okendo goes to her for one and too late back to first. So they settle for the fourth and Brunanski will be the batter. I don't know that I've got the answer to that question. I don't either. I, I'll tell you, this ball not hit sharply enough right to get the there. double play. Okendo making sure of one and her completing the play. But watch how the speed of the ball gives Herbeck a chance to get down to take her out just in case. Another thing about that graphic, I'll tell you, if I've got a name of Hooks as a pitcher, I'm going to change it. <laughs> you Hooks yeah. Wilson. You're right. Change it to Fred Wilson or something. Oh, he's a great curveballer. Great hooks? Curve, hooks. That's what they call a curveball. The hook. He was hooks. Threw more than one a game. And slider Brown, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> I know one thing about three finger on the high five. He'd have given at least 60 percent effort. No question about that. Got to hand it to him. <laughs> oh, stop it. Oh, <laughs> groan, groan. <laughs> oh, you're One on Brunanski. One out in the fourth. And that's grounded to third. Okendo to her and back to Dreeson, but he can't scoop it. And so the inning is still alive. They only get the force. There's no error charge on a play like that because of the force at second base. And up comes Tim Wander. I don't know if we'll have a chance to see, but Tommy Herr, his picture tells the same. You see Dreeson knock it down, but unable to come up with it. But her just kind of looked to the heavens. Routine double play, tailor made, and wasn't able to complete it. You know, and also sometimes it's not necessarily the takeout now as much as the takeout before. Herbeck got down there in a hurry because the ball was hit slower, and that may have made her rush the throw to first base. So Gaetti technically didn't take him out of the play, but Herbeck did, and that could have been the cause of the bad throw by Tommy. So Bernanski at first base, and he goes as Laudner grounds it to Smith. Ozzie corrals it and throws him out. So the inning is over. No runs to hit the man left. After three and a half, there's no score in game five. Hello. With the World Series here, Ed is offering some baseball tips. When the third base coach is acting like Ed is, it is not because of a nervous condition. He is telling the batter what to do. And if the game isn't going too well, he will make a different kind of signal. He is saying, the heck with this. Let's get out of here and enjoy a cold, frosty bottle of the Bartles and James premium wine cooler. Well, we hope you will do that, too. And thanks for your support. Good old dad. Mr. Advice. He had advice on everything. Marriage, jobs, even insurance. Work with the best in the business, he'd say. Work with Edna. Edna for your house, car, life insurance. It was his way of saying, I love you. Mr. Advice. 
No, I really need advice. Because today, Dad, you became a grandfather. Nature reveals itself in patterns of infinite variety. But science had no way to simulate such complex patterns. Now, an idea from IBM is changing that. A special field of mathematics called fractal geometry, developed by Benoit Mandelbrot of IBM. Made from nothing but numbers, these fractal images exist only in a computer. Yet this fractal landscape looks as real as nature itself. Scientists are using fractals to explore new ways to tap the Earth's soil reserves and to study long-range pollution patterns. Fractal geometry, one of many innovations from IBM and a new use of mathematics that's helping people understand how the world adds up. See, of the two takeout slides, maybe it's the first one by Herbeck, as he does get to Tommy Herr. Gaetti safely at first. Now you see Gaetti, the second takeout slide, and he really doesn't affect her. He hits him after he makes the throw. So I guess it'd be reasonable to assume that possibly Herbeck was the reason for Herr's bad throw on the Bernanski play. I think also, though, when a, when a runner goes into second base, that he ought to be able to touch the bag with his feet or his hands, and Gaetti could not do that. That's how uh, Tony Fernandez got hurt. Her lines one to Gaetti, who knocks it down, and it's time to get him. Plenty of time. One away. So her making good contact with Tommy 0 for 2 tonight and 3 for 17 in the series as Dreesen comes up. Just a fastball away. Outside middle. And that's what Her likes to do. Hit the ball where it's pitched. He does, but again, he's standing right in front of it. That's how you win gold gloves. You don't catch him, knock him down, and throw him out. It goes back to what Tommy Her said. I, I'm not getting a lot of hits, but I am hitting the ball sharply. Outside to Dreesen. Well, both teams are having problems in the three spot. Her three for 17. Puck at four for 18. Two balls, no strikes on Dreesen. One out, base is empty. Bottom of the fourth inning, no score. Lombard Dozy can afford on Dreesen to play that much back of the line. And later on, when Vince Coleman comes up with those 44 infield hits and 14 bunt hits, we'll take a look and see how he radically changes his defensive stance. Ken Herbeck, three unassisted. Two down. Blind Levin has now set down five in a row. He started the game by retiring the first six. And Willie McGee will be the batter. McGee grounds it out of the second inning. Red Chambings. Red is putting some sort of hex on the Twins. Now, Red's a major league manager for 12 years. And Red used to sit in that tunnel downstairs near the water cooler and put hexes on the opposition. <laughs> It worked two years, 67 and 8. Not the others, though. How many World Series shares do you say he had? It obviously this is his worked. ninth one. Yeah, he's six in, what, six in, th five in three in World Series play. All of the World Series in which he's been involved have gone seven games. We'll see you on Sunday. Two with Milwaukee included, 57 and 8. McGee fouls it off, and the count is nothing in two. The impressive thing about Burke Weiland tonight, and I, I think you noticed it too, is that he's changed his pattern. Curveball early, good enough fastball, and now they're looking for the curveball second time around, and he's going with a fastball. And what's interesting to me is he has the capabilities to totally switch it around the next time. Oh, look at that pitch. Down goes McGee, and... And it is a silent fourth inning tonight in St. Louis. No score as we go to the fifth. A tradition of horsepower. For the second consecutive year, Budweiser Racing Teams captured three national championships. Bobby Rahal in the Bud Indy Car. Kenny Bernstein in the Budweiser King. And Jim Cropfeld in Miss Budweiser. It's a tradition of horsepower that keeps Budweiser ahead of the pack. Racing fans. 
Fundamentals, fellas. Straight, simple fundamentals. It's a lesson we learn week after week. Now, you think you're getting to the top on charm and good looks? Bull. Janata, you're playing like you got a different agenda. Then, Kozlo, why don't you tell me about Mr. Simons? And somebody tell me how they're getting to our quarterback. Coach, aren't we ahead by 21 points? Now, you see that? That's what I'm talking about. As soon as you're satisfied as a football player, we're finished as a football team. Now, you think about that. All right, everybody else. When you fly over 200 college and pro teams each year, you can't help picking up a few lessons in success. United, rededicated to giving you the service you deserve. Come fly the friendly skies. How does the advanced new Chevy Halfton stand up to Ford? Chevy gives you more standard power than Ford. More cab room, more shoulder room, more two-sided galvanized steel, new two-tier loading, and a bigger, heavier frame. So how does Ford stand up to the first all-new full-size pickup introduced in this decade? Not very well. The of America. Test drive it. That's today's Chevy truck. The good ship, good year, blimp enterprise. Drew Marshall at the controls, looking down. Bush Stadium in St. Louis, game five of the 1987 World Series. No score as we go to the fifth inning. And Steve Lombardozzi, the leadoff. Last pitch of the fourth right here. Well, they talk about Goodens, Ryans, and your release point is you throw it at Tim Laudner's left shoulder. That's what you aim at. And then the breakature of the ball down and in and such tight spin McGee doesn't pick it up. Lombardozzi takes outside. One and all Lombardozzi, Blylevin and Gladden. Those are the eight, nine and one hitters in the fifth inning. Through four. Blylevin and Cox very much in command. As it's lined to center field for a base hit. So for the second inning in a row now, the Twins have the leadoff man on. Burbeck single to start the fourth, but the next three Twins grounded out. And now Bert Blylevin comes up in a bunt situation. He struck out in the third. And that's a sign of a young pitcher sometimes. You know that the pitcher's up second. And we talked about Cox having to get the ball down. He, he gets the ball up, you get the base hit. And, and the reason I say that is because you know that the pitcher is going to bunt. So he's going to give you the out. And instead of getting two sure outs, now you're going to have a man on scoring position in a nothing-nothing game that makes a big difference. Yeah, and the odds of him getting the bunt down are good. Remember, we talked about Okendo's bad shoulder boss from the slide last night at Dreesen. Look at this. Mm. Oh, Look at that one up. He had to miss that sign, didn't he? He hadn't hit since 1980. Well, that's what point. This is a point you brought up in the production meeting. One of the most difficult things is taking a sign because yeah. you're not used yeah. to doing it all year long. That's right. So he may have missed it. Now he's around the bunt and bunts foul. We'll go figure it out. Danny Cox comes up in a situation in which he swings away, has two strikes on him, and then he bunts with two strikes, and then Bly Levin comes out of the dugout and swings away. I don't know if it was a blown, normally when it's a blown sign, the, the batter steps out and the third base coach goes through the gyrations. I don't, I don't know. Now, or the hitter smiles. Yeah, the hitter smiles or whatever. <laughs> but the Twins just went about their business with Lennox at third, Kelly in the dugout. And now he's up there to bunt, and he lays it down, and it's fielded by Cox, and he has one play. And so both pitchers are able to bunt successfully with two strikes as Lombardozzi moves to second. And that's one of the up. reasons they made the lineup change. Laudner was hitting eighth or ninth with the DH, depending. They moved him up to seventh, Lombardozzi down to eighth for that precise reason. Easy to bunt over. Very hard to bunt Tim Laudner off, especially with a pitching staff that has not bunted or hit all year long. Well, you might say to yourself, how can an 0-2 pitch be a mistake when a pitcher is bunting? I mean, really, that was a hanging slider and a very easy pitch to bunt. Dan Gladden grounded out through a walk. Dreesen going out in a foul ground and has room near the bullpen plate. 
and tagging at second but only bluffing as the throw comes in is Lombardozzi. So two down in the fifth inning with Lombardozzi still at second and Gagney will be the batter. Danny Dreesen, he and Jim Lindeman platooning at first base in the absence of the injured Jack Clark. Clark with trainer Gene Gieselman. Spent a lot of time together lately. Yes. Jack was a little upset during the championship series because the indication was that it was only a sprained ankle, but it was more than that. Of course, the Cardinals were trying to keep it a little quiet as well to make the Giants wonder. And Clark finally came out and he said, hey, wait a second, it's more than a sprained ankle. A sprained ankle might be in there. One and all. And they have pitched Gagney very, very well during this season, or this series. Two for 18. He had a home run on a 2 0 pitch. And the way they've done it, we talked about the way he wraps his bat. And there you see the grip on Danny Cox with the seams. It's a ball that sinks when it's down, runs into the right hitter when it's up and in. Two balls, no strikes. We just talked about the way that Gagney wraps the bat, and what they've done is just run the ball in on him, and he has not been able to get around, especially off right-handed pitching. Twins nothing, Cards nothing. Fifth inning, Lombardozzi gets second, two out. Pena blocks it, three and zero oh, the count with Puckett on deck. We saw Greg Matthews crossing Pena up last night. This is not a cross-up, but a fine play by Pena shifting out. On the slide of the breaking ball from a right-handed pitcher, you don't really have to get in front of the ball, but as the ball hits the ground, you can't, it's kind of right center because a breaking ball will come back to the middle of your body. The spin will bring it back. You kind of play it off your right shoulder, and the spin from the right-handed pitcher brings it right back to you. The pain you really like a cat back there. Strike. Kaiser's got that quick little jam. Three and one. Another look. Three and oh. Maybe. <laughs> back with a slider. We always used to talk about the 3-0 pitch being the automatic. Seemed to be the case there. Well, and as you see, seven extra base hits, three home runs, four doubles. But a lot of times with a runner in scoring position, you're so anxious to pick up that run that you do have a tendency, more of a tendency, to go out of the strike zone, swing in the back. Doubles to Cox, and we played four and a half in game five with no score. Back after this from your local station. On 2020 Friday, when you're desperately ill, some people will promise you anything. Get well schemes that could cost you your life on 2020 Friday. There's two kinds of people. There's car people and there's truck people. And if you're going to design trucks, you better know the difference. I saw the desert last week. And there's this guy, and he has put a plastic liner. And he's using it for swimming. No. Like, people want to do that kind of thing with a truck. They want to treat it like it's indestructible. Tough hard bodies can take it. This truck is the right tool for the job. But a guy owns a Nissan, built for the toughest race of all, the human race. Here, in peaceful Santa Alba, is the opportunity to commit the perfect murder. You can't do this! This is murder! First-degree murder! Did you do it, son? I didn't kill him! I was trying to stop you! I'm the past that just caught up with you. And the difference between guilt and innocence is how far they're willing to go. Forever! Now! The Killing Time, rated R. Starts tomorrow. Check newspaper for time. This fall, PSA makes you smile. 
with savings of up to 60% everywhere we fly. And since PSA has the most non-stop flights throughout the West, you'll be able to go where you want to, when you want to. Nobody serves California like California's airline, PSA. Fly to Las Vegas for $29. Call your travel consultant or PSA to... I'm Gene Gleason. We'll have a late report on rain problems in the Southland. Dallas Rains tells us what to expect tomorrow. And Jim Hill has World Series highlights when I join Tawny Little at 11 tonight. Slime time starts at 7.30, Thursday, October 29th. Go back to Bob Gibson when he struck out 17. Who was the catcher? Tim McCarver. And I think uh, Willie Horton, the last strikeout victim that day, still thinks this slider hit him, but it didn't. You set up outside and the pitch was inside. Awesome. I mean, that ball must have broken 18 inches. And here he is, 19 years later. 19 years. Bush Stadium had natural grass and dirt at that point. Uh-huh. 1968. Of the fifth inning. And Kirk Ford takes a strike. Al Michaels, Jim Palmer, Tim McCarver, Bush Stadium. Game five of the World Series. No score. Bly Levin and Cox locked up in this one. Bly Levin has allowed just two base runners. Okendo and Pena started the third with singles, but he worked out of it. One and one to count. And make it 0 and 2 on the appeal. Lee Wire down in third calls this a strike when Tim Laudner asked him for help. And also, I assume Kenny Kaiser, the home plate umpire, asked him. Gave the affirmative call. That's grounded to the right side. Lombardozzi to Herbeck. One away. And Jose Okendo will be the batter. Well, coming up on Saturday, except on the West Coast, the rest of you will see Purdue against Iowa at noon, and that will be followed by Game 6 from the Metrodome at 3.30 Eastern and 12.30 Pacific. And those of you on the West Coast will see California taking on UCLA following World Series Game 6 Saturday. Jose Okendo, one and the count. run coming against Atlee Hamaker of the Giants from the right side and his other home run during the regular season also from the right side so 297 hitter during the regular season hitting left handed and we saw him the first time by 11 fastballs away just took him to left field now he's throwing him two changeups so he's trying to adjust and oh Kendall has not bitten at all at the breaking ball or the changeup. been said about Rod Carew and the video that Jose looked at before hitting that home run you were talking about Jim and I'll tell you he looks like a pup looks that look like out of the same kennel Rod Carew and Jose Okendo if you're going to get a video you'd get it after a guy like Rod Carew who you told me was the toughest out you ever faced well I only was uh, I think 23 for 46 lifetime you had that oh yeah but well, at least it was Rod Carew <laughs> Got a lot of company. He could hit. Pena the batter. Pena singled in the third. Okendo at first base. And Bly Lemon throws over there. And no balk controversy tonight to this point. Of course, the Cardinals have only had three base runners. Really, the right base runner, right? Okendo with four steals this year and caught stealing four times. So when he'll cheat is with Coleman, Smith, Her, maybe McGee. Mm -hmm. McGee not running much this year because of knee surgery, but very effective as you look at Rick Hatch, Acker looking into the dugout. 
He's looking for the sign. Maybe the first base coach gives the sign. Before Okendo went the last time, Hacker went to his left cheek when Okendo was looking over. So maybe Leva's a decoy, and that'd be very unusual because you rarely see a first base coach give a sign to the base runner. But why would he be looking into the dugout if that weren't the case? makes sense because when you try to steal signs you look at Nick Leva the third base coach so if you if he's just giving you decoys how are you ever going to pick up a pattern and if you do what matter does it make because the other coach is giving the signs it makes makes a lot of sense is Whitey that smart yes <laughs> maybe he bluffs going and the pitcher's inside one and one on Pena <laughs> Okendo checking with Leva while Hacker was looking into the dugout. Pitch out, nothing happening. Now I bet he's going. Tim. Yeah, I do too. Jim? Well, good idea. So, if you ever asked anybody that plays against the Tigers and Sparky Anderson hits a lot, what's the most familiar count? It's two and one, especially with a guy that can throw the ball over the plate. And you have a guy, as we said before, perfectly handles the bat. Doesn't need a strike to be able to hit the ball behind the runner or even make contact. It's not his style. He goes, and the pitch is wrapped in the right field for a base hit. And Okendo goes to third. It's going to be hard to tell from that angle what the pitch was, but the first three pitches, he was trying to get him to hit a breaking ball or a change up to the left side and keep away from this first and third situation with only one out. But here he goes with a fastball, exactly what happened last time, and Pena, you're right into his strength, but he's still got to do the job, and he does. And it's, it's really almost a, an instant replay of last time. Yeah, it really is. Only last time it was a 1-2 count, two strikes and one ball. Very interesting. You know, it's really a guessing game when to pitch out, when not to, but the pitch out put the Cardinals in a position that time to put the hit and run in play because it was two balls and a strike and there's no way unless you've got a lot of courage to put the hit and run on or to put the pitch out on again. Now we'll see if they can cash in as Cox up there to swing away misses 0-1. Leva sending the signs down to Cox. One out, first and third. We mentioned before, the squeeze was highly unlikely before first and third. Nobody out. A little more likely with one out. Well, even if you get you know, Kendall thrown out at home, you have a runner in scoring position. The problem, of course, is that then Cox has to hit with two outs. So if he is a contact hitter, you might let him swing away, hope that he doesn't hit in a double play, a ground ball to the right side, or a fly ball scores a run. 0-1 with one out. Oh, and 2 as he swings away. You think it's not tougher to pitch in the American League when they don't have a pitcher coming up? I mean, this is one of the luxuries, even though you have to earn your outs, whether it's a pitcher or anyone else that you have in the, in the National League or during the World Series in a National League park. That's but why run production's up about a run a game, generally speaking, in the American League compared to the National League. Remember two years ago in the World Series when Whitey had Tom Nieto squeezing with two strikes? Yep. And the squeeze is on, and he misses it, and he's thrown out at third. So Kendall was coming in from third, and the pitch was up and away, and may have been a pitch out, and it was. And Whitey Herzog gets outfoxed by Kelly right there. Got that right. That may have been a pitch out. As a matter of fact, he went after it. It's a double play. Yep, because he strikes out. Right. He made the full effort to butt. And so Kelly really did his homework as he thought back perhaps to Nieto two years ago. Strikeout, double play to the sixth inning. Nothing, nothing. Success stories. 
Brought to you by City Corp. During his 10 years in the major leagues, infielder Al Weiss had a reputation of good field, no hit. But in the 1969 World Series, Al changed all of that. Batting 455 and hitting a key home run in the fifth and final game, Weiss helped power the Miracle Mets past the heavily favored Baltimore Oil. Al Weiss had survived on his defensive skills, but it was his bat that succeeded in helping the Mets achieve their first ever world championship. You can see the dream of success in the eyes of people all across America. At Citicorp, we understand the dream. That's why, as Citicorp and Citibank, we've become America's largest financial services organization, already helping one in every five American families, with more home mortgages, more student loans, more MasterCard and Visa cards than any other company. We'd like you to get to know us better. Citicorp, because Americans want to succeed, not just survive. Gotta go. I own an insurance agency. I knew people would be coming to me to help them put their lives back together. George. I called Ed. You've got four computer terminals coming down air freight tomorrow. We'll restore... When you've got the best in the business behind you, you're covered. You can do some things. <laughs> What if things you never thought of in color were suddenly in color? That's how we thought of our new Delta faucets. Faucets that make a splash even before you turn them on. We designed them so you can design with them. Colorful Delta faucets. They'll color the whole way you look at faucets. And maybe everything else. Delta washerless faucets. Designs that last. This ABC Sports exclusive is being brought to you by Merrill Lynch. So we go into the sixth inning with no score. Puckett, Herbeck, and Gaetti coming up. Cox and Blyleven in a bizarre and unusual ending to the fifth inning. We mentioned Tom Nieto squeezing with two strikes in the St. Louis, Kansas City World Series two years ago. There's Nieto in the middle of your picture, seated. He's behind Butera. Behind Butera right now. Sitting next to the clubhouse he, man, Jimmy Wiesner. He was a Cardinal two years ago, and Whitey shocked everybody by having the yawning Nieto surprise everyone with a two-out squeeze bun, and he tried to do the same thing with Cox here and double play. Takes inside, ball one. Tom Brunansky, we understand, leaves his glove and his cap on top of one of our cameras. Is a good luck charm or symbol as it's grounded to third. And Okendo throws Puckett out as the Kirby's rows continue. One away here in the sixth inning. And Herbeck will be the batter. I'll tell you, I'm not saying this after the fact, but it's very difficult to convince me that that 0-2 squeeze play is a good play. And I'll tell you why. Uh, in that particular situation, a pitcher, as you know, Jim, is more inclined to waste a pitch, and really nothing happens. If you waste a pitch, so it's 1-2. and two. And that, in my opinion, is one of the biggest reasons that you don't squeeze 0-2 because pitchers are trained to waste pitches 0-2. The count's no balls and two strikes. Watch Loudner. Not only is it a pitch out, you've got a free pitch out. Cox went after the ball, and Okendo's tagged out. Double play. So unusual, though, is he went after the ball after Loudner had caught it. The initial bunt really wasn't a bunt attempt. It's almost after he caught it, he went out there the second time. And I believe that's what Ken Kaiser called the strike. Two and one to count. One out, bases empty, no score in the sixth inning. I'll tell you, it's certainly an unlikely situation to put a squeeze on in that particular situation. Because if you miss the bunt, it's a strikeout. Coleman. So two down, and Gary Gaetti is the batter. Gaetti. 
thinking about a shutout for either pitcher. Fly Levin with 55 during his career, only one this season. Cox without a shutout this year. And as we said, pitched extremely well here at St. Louis, six and three, and had trouble on the road. One and zero, the count on Gaetti. Two down, bases empty in the sixth. No runs, four hits for the Cards. No runs, three hits for the Twins. One and one. something that's holding true. Mike Rourke, who's a pitching coach for St. Louis, said that when you have a lot of ability, and the two pitchers we're seeing tonight do have that, all you have to do is make four or five or six pitches when you need to. Bly Levin's done it to get out of a couple innings. Cox has struggled, but when he has to come up with the big breaking ball or run the ball in or down and away, he's been able to do it. That's why it's nothing, nothing going into the sixth inning. Two balls, two strikes, with two out and no one on, in the sixth inning with no score. ingredients, beechwood aging, and a special touch of care and pride. No other brewer has such a tradition of quality to live up to. But then, no other brewer makes the king of beers. After all, this bud's for you. Pamela Hall, top buyer around the world trips. You call your own shots. It's fun. <laughs> but weren't you just caught trying to call America from Paris? A silly misunderstanding. And by stuffing Greek drachma into a French phone? I thought they'd fit. Damn. You need the AT&T card. Oh? With the AT&T card, you never need coins, even overseas. Your calls are billed automatically to your phone back home. <laughs> Beautiful. So you'll take it, Pam? It's the perfect accessory. To get the AT&T card, dial 1-800-CALL-ATT. A sage once said that there is opportunity in every calamity. We believe the economic picture is much better than the recent stock market decline would suggest. Investors willing to assume the risk might now look for opportunities in stocks of good companies. More conservative investors might consider high-quality bonds. A sudden market decline can be the best time to look for value with professional guidance. At Merrill Lynch, we're ready to help. How does the advanced new Chevy half-ton stand up to Ford? Chevy gives you more standard power than Ford. More cab room, more shoulder room, more two-sided galvanized steel, new two-tier loading, and a bigger, heavier frame. So how does Ford stand up to the first all-new full-size pickup introduced in this decade? Not very well. The of America. Test drive it. That's today's Chevy truck. Goodyear blimp hovering high above Bush Stadium. <laughs> right. On a beautiful and clear night. And earlier tonight, as is the custom here, August A. Bush Jr. came in on his Clydesdale powered wagon. To the acknowledgement of this big crowd. Brewery, of course, owns the Cardinals. I think 52 or 53 was the period that Mr. Bush purchased the Cardinals. And this is his sixth World Series participation. Three in the 60s, three here in the 80s. And the amazing thing about this franchise is up in over 3 million this year as Coleman takes a strike. The Dodgers have, have owned that attendance championship 
seemingly forever. And L.A. drawing uh, three million with some consistency. But this year the Dodgers were under, and the Cardinals and Mets went over, and the Cardinals led all of baseball in attendance. Just remarkable. Coleman fouls it back. And the other thing about the Cardinals, they would have drawn even more, but they had some weather problems. They lost some dates to rainouts. Remember, they had those back-to-back doubleheaders with Los Angeles. Otherwise, they would have done about 3.15, 3.2. Buddy, for the Cardinals, only the bottom part of the order has done any damage. Jose Okendo and Tony Pena with two hits apiece. One and two the count. Well, the key, and they say on the appeal, no. That's why Lodner threw the first. He threw the first because he figured if they had gotten the appeal from Lee Wire and it was a strike, it would have been the put out, but Wire said no. One and two. Take another look at the curveball. Ooh. It's hard to tell from this angle, but that's what the third baseman umpire is down there for. He can see as the uh -huh. best perspective. That's why you almost see every time the catcher asking for help. Very close. The rule being that if you stop it before the plate, it's not a strike. Another attempt on a curveball by fly level. Two and two the count. It's an interesting series. The big innings have won all games. Mm -hmm. Seven run in the first, six in the second for the Twins and then for the Cardinals even though they were second to the Mets in three run innings this year which is I think a lot of people would find amazing three runs in that third game and then what six runs in the fourth yesterday it may not take a big inning to win this game big inning might be one run that's grounded down to Herbeck who stays with a wicked high hit the seam as it came through the box. Otherwise, it would have been routine. That's exactly what it did. All hops on the rug are relatively routine and true, with the exception of the cutouts. And there's no way to bobble one uh, with Coleman running. Let's see. Yep. Hit the seam or the dirt. Certainly changed the spin on the ball. Look how late Blylevin's there like he already beat him anyway but again it's a very tough play only because the ball stayed down but if Blylem is a little earlier he may have thrown the ball a little harder now Smith and now we'll watch Blylem's move that's a complete stop and the pitch high ball one little doubt about that stop right there struggling he knows he has to hurry trouble getting it out I-11 it's a tie anyway it goes to the runner he's safe just give your first baseman a little better perspective if you get there early it is scored as a bad hop single that's a good score I mean a good score by the score well, I'm quickly going back to first base and again of the 39 runners that attempted to steal second, 32 were successful. We're talking about a guy at first now with 109 steals, 107 last year and 110 his rookie year. He has four in the series, too. Lou Brock with the all-time record. He had seven in 1967 and eight. Well, has gone to first four straight times. There's a complete stop and a fifth throw. And again, that's what it says in the rule book, a complete stop. Well, the key, though, Al, is when he is going to cheat, when he comes to a complete stop, most likely he is going to go to first base. When he's going to quick pitch, excuse me, he'll come right there, and that's his stop position, and he goes to first. When he's going to go home, he may not pause as much. That's when you either call the block as we see a pitch out. He came to a complete stop that time, little doubt. 2-0 and the count. What Whitey was complaining about was that as his hands were coming down to stop, his leg was going up before his hands were really reached that stop position. So therefore, he started his windup before he got into that stop position. That's where the 11 box and the three box in the first inning came from. Often it's not the stolen base, but the threat of the stolen base that gets a pitcher in trouble. Here it is, 2-0 to Ozzie Smith. Score. Bottom of the 
the sixth inning. There he goes. Big jump, and Smith hits it foul. Well back out of play. Two and one. at Vince Coleman's jump. Excellent. In that one-way lead that you're talking about, he gets a big lead, leans back towards first, which is one way. It's going back towards first. But he is ready. He's coiled. He's poised to go to second base. I think he balked right there. I don't think that he stopped. And that's, but that's what he has to do. He knows. And Dick Such, the pitching coach, said he, he thinks he's better than the hitter. So he's going to worry about him. If the base runner gets on, eventually he'll get out of the inning without giving up runs. And again, if you're talking about percentages, if you get up two or three runs over the course of a season per game, you're going to be pretty successful. Tonight, they could beat you by one run. A stop. Coleman bluffs. Smith bunts up the line. One punt, and everybody's safe. today offended because the media was referring to certain types of innings as cardinal types of innings. Well, this is how the Cardinals score their runs. An infield hit for Vince Coleman, a bunt single for Ozzie Smith. It typifies the way they have to score runs. And it's only the second time in the World Series that Coleman and Smith have gotten on back to back. Tommy Herr is at the plate. Herr, 0 for 2. And the Twins have to think about the buck with Gaetti and Herbeck playing in. Outside, 1-0. This is the, the first time in the World Series, and here we are midway through game five, that you've had a situation where you've got Coleman at second and Smith at first, and that's a situation, I don't know how many times that happened during the regular season, but a lot. Nobody out, no score. trying to do is just cut down the lead. Coleman stole third base 24 times, only thrown out five times, so he is very capable of cruising into third. I don't think in this situation he's going to steal. But again, as you said, when you have fast guys on the base, it changes the rhythm, it changes the pitch selection, and now her has got the count 1-0, and oh, which is a favorable count for him. So Whitey has many options, as does her. familiar with what constitutes a balk. There are a lot of things to do, but you the only, only base you have to throw to when you come off the rubber is the first base. You can fake the second, you can fake the third as long as there's a runner at those occupied or the bases are occupied. One and one. Oh. Curveball in a bunting situation. It's, it's something I always heard when I first started. Guys trying to bunt, you throw them high fastballs. I always felt it was much more difficult to bunt a curveball, mainly because of the position of the bat. They always tell you that you want to have the fat end of the bat up, you want to have an angle, and the minute they throw that big breaker, what happens is that the, you re, kind of reverse the handle. You're darting for the ball, a high fastball, you just lay the bat in front of it. I know it might induce a pop-up, but I think a good tight breaking ball is a great pitch to throw in a bunch situation because if you bunt through it, you're looking at a possible chance to pick somebody off. In the air, foul, and now it's one and two. Obviously, Burt Blylevin is taking to your theory. That's the third straight curveball that he's thrown Tommy Herr. 
wonder why I say that is when you say, normally when you take batting practice, they'll say bunt two and hit eight the first round or ten or something like that. They never throw you a breaking ball. They just kind of lob it in there. You bunt it to first and third or whatever. All of a sudden you have a guy with one of the best curve out balls in the history of baseball throwing you his best pitch. Score with Coleman in second and Smith at first. One and two on Tommy Herr with Grecian on deck in the sixth inning. One and two. Tommy Herr, as you look at Nick Labor, the third base coach, Herr having a tough postseason. The one thing he is doing, though, is, is making some contact. He has only struck out once. In 44 postseason at bat, so he does figure to put the ball in play. Coleman at second, Smith at first. Much better hitter from the right side. Almost close to 300 at 297, only 242 from the left side. So the edge to Blylevin as far as what side of the plate you want him on. Still a ball and two strikes. Tell you, Blylevin had turned to throw to Gagney then. Gagney working the daylight play, and that's a play where the shortstop breaks, and if the runner doesn't break back to second base, then there is daylight, or in this case, nightlight, between the runner and the shortstop. It's a blind play. Watch Gagney. See, from a pitcher's angle, there's daylight there. He turns and throws. It's a blind play. And another fake by Lombardozzi. But had Burt done that, they would have nailed Coleman. Remember, Coleman was picked off the second base in the National League Championship Series against the Giants. Was it, I believe it was Turecki. Yeah, right. To left field, fading on it. He has a play, does Gladden, and the runners hold. So one away here in the sixth inning. Her is now 0 for 3 with Coleman still at second and Smith at first. And it will bring up Danny Dreesen, who has flied out and grounded out and is 1 for 10 in the World Series. So her cannot get the bunt down, and the Cardinals still have runners at first and second, and the Twins could get out of the inning with a ground ball. Tommy had two chances of making outs and advancing the runners. Even if you can't get the bunt down, you still have an opportunity to pull the ball and get the runner to third base, unless, of course, they turn the double play. So Tommy with two chances in effect. Cardinals, of course, have already run their way out of two scoring chances tonight. Two on and one out. One and oh in the third inning with Okendo at third in the infield back. Jose hesitating on a ground ball to Gagney playing deep and Greg came home to get him. And then the two strike strikeout and aborted squeeze for the double play to end the fifth. and really his ability to hit the ball up the middle, that's where they're playing him. So actually, they always say the easiest base to steal is third base because you can get a bigger lead. But in this case, Coleman really can't get off too much because Gagney's playing right behind him. Now what the situation does do, it, you do have your infielders moving around trying to keep that lead as close as you can at second. The runners go. The pitch is inside, dropped by Lodner. He wouldn't have had a chance anyway. with Coleman. All right. Double steal. Not only did he have a good jump, but watch the pitch that Loudner House has to handle. A curveball down and in, and he can't grip it, and even had he gripped it, there's no way to get to get Vince Coleman. Now the count 2-0 oh on Dreesen. McGee on and remember, McGee led the National League in grounding into double plays this year. So it's not the worst thing in the world if they walk him and it's 3-0. And, oh. and Lodner makes a nice play to keep us scoreless. Coleman at third. There's McGee, first base open. And Willie, of all people, and you could have got 10,000 to one and he would have led the National League in double plays. 
He grabbed it into 24. Good play by Laudner again, and they're going to walk Dreesen. So once again, Tom Kelly's done his homework. Bases loaded and one out, and Willie McGee now. He also drove in 105 runs this year, too. And he's also hitting 467 in this series coming into this That's game, right. even though he's 0 for 2 tonight. So, but you're playing percentages. Whitey did say, I didn't think he hit 25 or 24 DPs in his career. He did it in one year. Let's chronicle it. Knee problem, came back in the middle of April. Had a solid year, though. 285, hitting just about the same for both sides. So, But he's a type of guy, hits the ball sharply, hits the ball in the middle of the field, and on AstroTurf, you've got to get some tailor-made double plays. Well, also, Blylevin had to entice the hitters to hit into 32 double plays. That's a lot for that type of pitcher. And I bet he did it mostly with curveballs. So the man who was second in the American League faces the man who was first in the National and grounding into them, and it's a strike, 0-1. Bases loaded with Coleman at third, Smith at second, Dreesen at first, no score, bottom of the sixth inning. One out. Oh, and two, another curve. See, with the curveball that Glylevin has, for the most part, a hitter's going to hit the top half of the ball because it's biting down. Jim has talked about that tight spin so much. And I would think McGee would get another one here. No time to waste any. In the World Series, McGee is now 0 for 5 against Lyleven and putting three strikeouts. He's won. This is how you can put your position yourself in a position to do it when you have bases loaded one out. You got a strikeout pitch. And because he's shown so many fastballs tonight, you really don't know what to look for. It's exactly what Paul Molitor said. You can't sit on one pitch. And then when you get two strikes, you look for the ball. The spin so tight on that curveball, he never picked it up. Kurt Ford now with the bases loaded, two down. Cardinals for the third time in the game, a man at third. Trying to get him home, and Coleman bluffing down the line. But the stretch takes care of that, Al. If you go into a full windup, the guy can bluff you more after Bach. When you take your stretch, and he's, a, he's in the stretch position, you really limit what Vince Coleman can do to you in this situation with two outs and a man on third. One and done. You know that any pitch you throw is going to beat him the home plate, so he doesn't make the rush your delivery. That's why you work for the stretch. Exactly. And what's happened, is, I think he's more worried about Kurt Ford. Had two base hits and a walk up in Minnesota against him. Tonight, he's pitched him very well. Will pop up to third base and a ground ball. How many times do you see a runner at third base draw a throw from a pitcher? Vince Coleman, you got a chance of seeing it happening. pitch to hit here. He's going to try to throw it to the center of the plate, hope it runs in or out, and throw a strike. you got a young, as you said, a young, aggressive hitter. Hasn't been around that long, only in his second year. Will he be patient? Will he get a good pitch to hit? That's the question here. I don't think Blylevin can afford to, to really find out. He's got to throw a strike. He does, and it's two and one. Fastball on the inner half. 
Again, you throw it for the middle of the plate, and it just happens to run in. It turns out to be a, a, a perfect pitch. Coleman, Smith, and Dreesen with two out and two and one on Kurt Ford, who has popped to third and grounded to second. And he hits that one in the center field to score Coleman. Here comes Smith. The throw is going to third. He's safe there for nothing. so impressive about Okendo and Ford. They sit on the bench during this game, not only when they're hitting, and concentrate on what he's doing. And they've seen the breaking ball behind in the count, and there he's looking for it, just fouled it off. Out. And then 
terminology vernacular is when you miss one like that, you kicked it, and he eventually did do that. Play he makes just about every time. I can't, I mean, as you said, Al, best defensive club in the American League, least amount of errors. He'll tell you should have made it. We all know that. Gagney made 18 during the regular season, but that is not necessarily that many for a shortstop. Pena at the plate. That's only the third error by Minnesota in this series. The Cardinals also with three. One and oh the count. Pena the eighth man to bat in the inning. Gaetti to Lombardozzi. The Cards get three in the sixth. Six, three nothing, St. Louis. IBM presents You Make the Call. With a runner on second, a batter attempts a sacrifice bunt. He then clearly runs out of the baseline and is hit by the ball, which remains in fair territory. Can the runner score? You make the call. Page five headings. He wants some bolder. Check. Presenting personal publishing with the IBM Personal System 2. Page 7, artwork, smaller. No, no, bigger. Well, make up my mind, will you? Oh, no! What, what, what? The bonuses. Oh, those worth a shot. Everything your business needs. Okay, print it. To create quality documents, in-house, on short notice. I'd like you to make a few changes. Ah. Personal publishing with the IBM Personal System 2. Any time a batter runs out of the baseline and is hit by the ball, he's out. The ball is dead, even if it winds up in fair territory. If you said the runner couldn't score, then you made the right call. Well, Bob, here it is. Top of the ninth, two out. Kaminsky's at bat. And here's the pitch. Uh-oh, that ball's going, going. You can kiss that baby. Holy cow! I know that 30 pack is big. But, Jim, would you look at the size of that billboard? I know, Bob. That's what Kaminsky was looking at. And look who just got tagged out at second. The Stroh's 15 and 30 pack. With more cans in every case, what more could you ask for? Next Thursday, the good guys make it happen. First, me, Sledgehammer, handing out justice with a G. Then, it's the Charmings with comedy that'll suck your knocks... <laughs> knock your socks off. Then, he's bad. He's mad. He's the Clint with a glint in his magnum. Clint Eastwood. Yeah, you could say that. Whoa. The big guy goes over the edge in the network television premiere of Tightrope. And you thought there was nothing around to make your day Thursday. This is what started the bottom of the sixth inning. The bad hop infield single by Vince Coleman. Watch the hop. It stayed down. Burbeck can't retrieve it in time. A very close play at first. I mean, very close. Now here's Kurt Ford with a count two balls and a strike. So you saw what started it, and for the most part, what interrupted it. Jose Okendo ended the scoring on the error by Greg Gagne. 3 nothing Cardinals. So now Danny Cox with the Cardinals three runs, seven hits, and no errors. And the Twins, no runs, three hits, and one error will face Brunanski, Laudner, and Lombardozzi. And after sort of a shaky beginning, and there's Blylevin, Cox not really in complete rhythm, even though he is working on a shutout. He has now retired nine of the last ten men he has faced. So he is very much in the groove. Well, they always say the sign of a good pitcher is you can win when you don't have everything going for you. And that's certainly been the case tonight. You can see he's mixed up his pitches in the, the changeup right even more so. Did not throw any. I don't think he threw one the first three innings, and he's been using it very effectively the last three to get here to the seventh inning. Now, meanwhile, Cox is in the mid-70s in terms of pitching. What Whitey, of course, would love more than anything else would be five-run bottom of the inning and a huge lead because what he has to begin to also think about right now is Danny Cox, a seventh game possibility. And he'd have to pitch that on two days rest. Laudner, swinging a mess, going one. That was his 76th pitch. So he's on a pace on which if he went all the way, he'd throw about 112.
think really what he wants is one more inning. Mm -hmm. And then he knows he's got Warrell, Daly. And if you talk to Todd Warrell, he wants the more he pitches, the better he feels he's going to be. Thinks he can even throw harder. He was only throwing 97 miles per hour the other night. giving Wayne out a wander and Tom Kelly much as Whitey was dreaming about Lambert the runway at Lambert the other night I think Tom is thinking about the runway at Minneapolis St. Paul the only thing that makes that and maybe this is what makes Danny uh, Cox's slider so so good is the way he caught that ball almost handcuffed him a little bit Tim why the bullpen busy it's three to nothing top of the seventh the pitcher if anybody gets on Burt Blylevin's spot is hitting and no action in the bullpen. Atherton was up in the last inning because Blylevin was in trouble, but he's not. And so nothing happening in the Minnesota pen at the moment. Maybe Keith is ready, but if Minnesota has a big inning, I suppose, then Baron Gare or Schatzeter or perhaps Reardon could get ready. Jeff Reardon only one appearance this, this series. That's another thing that... Uh, Kelly's got to think about as well. Even if they are losing 3-0, you might want Reardon in there yeah. just to oh, he work said it in to sharp. Him, I talked to him before the game, and he said he will see some action tonight to get ready for game six and seven, if necessary. With the off day tomorrow, especially. Yeah. You can't let a guy sit around since, what, last Sunday where he had an inning, and then go to him in game six when he hasn't been out there in, a, what, six days. Blylevin, for the moment, has his helmet on. That there's no way when you're down three nothing in the seventh inning. Strike. Well, Tom Kelly, to be honest, he did say it is more difficult to manage without the DH, and he admits it. But he's done it before. He did it at the minor league level. And this isn't something that the, if you talk to Tom Kelly, you know how intelligent he is. The, the, the thing is, what he objected to is they ask him questions like he's got to come into nuclear physics to manage without the DH. Is he man? I don't know how to manage. goes Wander and Cox knows how to manage the twin lineup right now it's six strikeouts for Danny three in succession and Lombard Dozy is the batter kind of an upper deck look at the low and away slider you see Laudner swing over it and that's what you're going to do on that good slider and that's literally what it does it slides away from the right hand hitter slides in from a right-hander to a left-handed hitter. And the twin bullpen will get busy. As Lombardozzi takes a strike. 0-1. Again, it is Atherton. There's Blylevin on deck, but that's just window dressing. There's no way he comes up. If Lombardozzi keeps the inning alive and Atherton throwing in the pen. Bird out of the on-deck circle because the rules say somebody has to be out of the on-deck circle. One and one. Amazingly similar to the playoffs when they come back and having to win two. Giants don't score for 18 innings. Ten, eight runs come into here. One and two runs. None tonight. It's an amazing game, and we love it, and so do millions of other people. And I mean, go figure it out. Go start at the very top. The Minnesota Twins, sixth last year. The St. Louis Cardinals, a battered and bruised team. The Twins look like they're on their way to a series sweep. And the next thing you know, the Cardinals are on the verge of taking a 3-2 series lead. Go figure. I think what's the stat that it's only the second time in World Series history that two teams with losing records we're in the World Series the next year. The only other time, oddly enough, it was the Twins in 65 against the Dodgers. And L.A. 1-7. and seven. The Two out rally caps. Three and two. Two out, nobody on. The rally caps aren't as much in motion no. as they would be no. normally. with the walk and he becomes the first runner base runner for the twins since the fifth inning when Steve led off with a single 
Lyle Evans called back. Rourke on the phone to the Cardinal bullpen, and Gene Larkin will come up. Does that magnify the error by Greg Gagne? It's only two to nothing. Every time anybody gets on, the tying runs at the plate. Well, it's not to really add more blame, because you know it was just an obvious play that he makes just about every time, but it does change the strategy of the game, both from Tom Kelly's standpoint and from Whitey Herzog's. And Todd Worrell will get ready to start throwing in the St. Louis bullpen. Larkin coming up here with two out. Lombardozzi at first base in the seventh inning. Larkin is a switch hitter. This year he hit 256 as a left-handed batter and 286 as a right-handed hitter, and he was 5 for 17 with six runs better than as a pinch hitter. And his power is from this side. He's a natural right-handed hitter, graduate of Columbia. And for some reason, I don't know why, he said, I just hit the ball farther from the left side, even though naturally I grew up hitting right-handed. And four home runs, three left-handed. Latin is on deck. And he hits it high in the air to left center field. Coleman going back and gauges it, and that's that for the Twins. No runs, no hits, lead one after six and a half. Three nothing, Cardinals. The Cardinals and the Twins return to the Metrodome for game six of the World Series. Then a Pac-10 matchup as California meets eighth-ranked UCLA, Saturday on ABC. Today, you need an insurance company that looks out for you year after year. A company with experience, measured in centuries instead of years. A company with a firm financial footing. You need the Hartford, the insurance people of ITT. When you need us most, we're at our best. That's the Hartford difference. When you compare the price of a Toyota Camry with the price of a Honda Accord, don't forget to include all your costs, like repairs and maintenance and depreciation. Because over a four-year period, the Accord could cost hundreds and hundreds of dollars more to keep up than a Camry. Hundreds and hundreds of dollars. So see your Toyota dealer today and keep your car costs from going out of sight. For you. This is the shape of fear. You're not going to like it. This is the color of hell. What is it? And this is the power of the Prince of Darkness. From John Carpenter, director of Halloween. A vision of the most powerful evil of all. Prince of Darkness. Where are you? Rated R starts tomorrow at theaters everywhere. I'm Gene Gleason. Dallas Rains will tell us how long this rainstorm is going to last. Bill Press comments on President Reagan's news conference tonight, and Jim Hill has highlights of tonight's World Series game at 11. Slime time starts at 7.30 Thursday, October 29th. know one thing it's on to Minnesota where John Tudor will work on Saturday against Les Straker Viola would pitch a seventh game we know that against maybe Cox on two days rest we don't know what about the way the rotation is set up the balance of the series Jim? well you have a rookie against one of the best pitchers in the National League and that's Straker against Tudor I mean Straker pitched the game of his life the other night six innings shut out ball but I'll tell you what he's never been down here he's up 2-0 versus being down possibly three games to two. Keith Atherton comes in to pitch now in the bottom of the seventh inning with Danny Cox to lead off. What is so interesting is that the most dominating ball club in their home ballpark will be going back, and the situation will be they'll have to win two ball games. And if you're going to pick, as far as excitement is concerned, if you're going to pick a club to do that, you would pick the Minnesota Twins. Mm -hmm. 60 and 25 this season, as you see Keith Atherton, the new pitcher. And while some debris is removed from the field, 
Packard and Waits. It's 3-0 St. Louis. Cox, Coleman, and Schmidt in the bottom of the seventh inning. And Danny fouls it straight back nearly into Jack Buck's radio booth. 0-1. for the Minnesota Twins. This thing he doesn't play for the Giants or the Tigers. <laughs> well, the Twins, before they were the Twins, they were the Washington Senators. And 10 consecutive road losses in World Series play. 1925, the last time this franchise won a World Series road game. Going to, there it is again. At Pittsburgh in 25 against the New York Giants at the Polo Grounds in 33. At Dodger Stadium, they lost all three in 65, and now two so far, and six outs away from making it 11. Still two and two. Tom Kelly, who watched his team come into St. Louis up two games to nothing, is now watching the World Series even at two games apiece, and his ball club trailing. Cardinals three, Twins nothing. Bert Blylevin out of the game in the bottom of the seventh inning. Danny Cox, who's pitched brilliantly for St. Louis, leading things off and grounding one to Lar Bardozzi. One away here in the seventh inning, and Coleman will be the batter. This Sunday, an international first on ABC Sports, the Soviet national basketball team takes on the NBA's Milwaukee Bucks in Milwaukee. The McDonald's basketball open tips off live 3.30 Eastern this Sunday on ABC Sports. And then on Sunday night, if we go to 7, 8 o'clock Eastern time would be game 7. Meanwhile, remember, it's a day game on Saturday. Day game Saturday for game 6, 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific time. three and that one was the bad hop single that began the three run rally one and oh such a painful way for Bly Levin to give up those three runs oh I agree Great. good pitches but then again a very joyous hop for Vince Coleman what in his strength to speed and he ran the first hard why Levin hesitated a little bit and that's the difference between the out call and a safe call and all of a sudden you put Ozzy Smith in a position where he can do what he does best which is to either spray the ball punt yeah, his, his, his intention there was to sacrifice and because Ozzy got the base hit made the base hit out of the sacrifice a case can be made that that also led to the three runs because if it's a straight sacrifice, her flies to, run to left field. You don't know what Dreesen's going to do, but Willie McGee struck out, and that would have been the third out. Two and one on Coleman. Whitey Herzog. Coleman at the plate. His uh, cousin, I think a lot of you know, Greg Coleman is the Minnesota Vikings punter. And the Vikings were scheduled to play in the Metrodome against the Denver Broncos on Sunday, and they've had to move that game back to Monday. Three and one. That's what we were talking about last night. Vince Coleman's career year this year is because he takes pitches. I mean, they're going to throw that same pitch. Two and one. That's now it's ball three. He's going to throw him another fastball right down the middle of the plate. He's going to get the same pitch three and two because if you walk him, it's a double. Three one to Coleman. His ball four. So Vince is on, and up comes Smith. 
reared it in the bullpen. Meanwhile, we understand that the football game in Minnesota will be moved to Monday only if there is a seventh game with the Broncos playing the Vikings. Ozzie Smith, one for three. So did Ozzie start the season off slowly in a new position, batting second. Only did it about maybe 67 times last year. Done it all this year, taking a lot of pitches. Slow start. Came on strong. Coleman goes. Huge jump. Hit foul by a jumping hacker. And the count 0-1. Ozzie will do that sometimes with Coleman running, regardless of the jump he gets. He knows he's going to get a fastball with Coleman on first, and he'll try to pull it in that hole. Coleman would have been safe, but Ozzie Smith kind of mixes it up occasionally. He'll take, he'll give Vince a chance to, to steal. In the first game here at, in St. Louis, you saw him square around the bunny, took the bat back. He mixes it up. As a matter of fact, he talking about the fact that he's driven in 75 runs this year. 32 times he drove in Coleman. And Smith, who broke his bat, back up with a new piece of wood with a count 0-1, and, and Coleman at first base. One away. Quick move might have gotten him. And a balk. And a balk. I believe it was Dave Phillips or Terry Tate at first base. Well, anybody can call it. I think season. they called it in unison. I really do. Yeah. I mean, that was clearly a balk. 13% of all the balks committed in 1986 were committed with Fitz Coleman on, on base. That's not a balk. That is not a balk. If you run that back, he did pause. He did stop. I think so? Yes. I thought he was coming up when his hands were coming down, as you explained it earlier. Maybe. <laughs> I'm sure we'll see it again. <laughs> Jim looks just like game two when Whitey was out there. Of course, you know, I'm a little bit prejudiced, but I didn't think he balked right there. I, I... Terry Tata called it. Thanks. Also, Dave Phillips. Ken Herbeck talking to Terry. Of course, you got to realize more box are called in the National League. Now the rule is you got to, you have to stop. That's a stop. I, I agree didn't with see, you. I did I not agree. see the leg come up before the hand stopped. Seeing it but the again, second time, I agree with you. We I talked to Kenny. We talked to Kenny Kaiser, and he said it's the interpretation of the umpire, and that's all that matters. Meanwhile, Reardon has been summoned in and will be summoned out for the moment. We'll be right back. ready for a five-speed and more standard horsepower than Ford Ranger, we've got your truck. Chevy S10. More power to make your heart beat. The heartbeat of America. Chevy S10. Chevy truck. Do me a favor. Don't cheer me up. James, we lost an arm. That's not the end. I lost my work. I'm a liability. You're not going to settle for that. James was my best driver. She said he's still your best driver. I don't know how you're going to do this. Eleanor, no, no, no. she works for Aetna. Aetna carries our insurance. Company with people like that woman's got something going for it, I tell you. I met you. 
old rule of mine. You work with the best in the business. You sure it's not out of your way? It's nowhere out of my way. Like you went for me. The fans' favorite pastime. We want to keep it a good time for everybody. At baseball stadiums across the U.S. and Canada, there's a new team spirit. We want you to have fun at the game. We want you safe on the road. Because we want you back. Everybody's pitching in to keep drinking from spoiling a good time. Responsibility! That's the spirit! So when you make your run for home, we know you'll be safe. Get the team spirit. Team techniques for effective alcohol management. The preceding message was furnished by Major League Baseball. We're back with Reardon on the mound. One out, Coleman at second. And Ozzie Smith with Coleman going to third. The pitch is high, the throw is too late. There are just some times when somebody has better ability than you could contend with. And this is one of those times. You saw the clock. Once again, he just beats the throw. You can't get rid of the ball quickly enough, get it to the catcher, have him throw to third to beat a guy with speed like Coleman. First guy in National League history to ever steal over 100 bases three times. And I hope Ricky Henderson was not sitting at home the other night and thought that I said Major League history, and I might have said that because he did it not three years in a row, but three times. Smith fouls it away with the infield playing in, and the count one ball and two strikes. That, by the way, is... The sixth stolen base in the World Series, one short of Luke Rock's record, set twice. 1967, and then he tied it in 68. He didn't set it twice. He set it once and tied it. One ball, two strikes on Ozzie Smith. And Reardon, the possessor of a 90-plus fastball, excellent breaking ball. And it's grounded, knocked down by Lombard Dozy, but too late. speed you're not playing it in it's a routine ground ball to second as Uncle Doji tries to knock it down makes Smith a better hitter if Coleman doesn't get balked to second steal third we have seen four runs and they could be directly contributed or attributed to to the speed of the Cardinals we've seen four runs on one ball hit out of the infield Kurt Ford that was hit through the infield Pitch inside, throw to second, too late. Well, another high leg kick, bad pitch to throw on, up and in. And Smith, who had 43 during the regular season, steals another one. Throw a little bit into Ozzy. The throws on the money, it's going to be very close. George Frazier now in the bullpen. And that was one of the matchups out before this playoff series. Whether it's Reardon, whether it's Atherton, whether it's Blylevin, the wrong guys get on, they're off to the races. 2 and all. And the only way you could contend with that is to put runs on the board like the Twins did in game one and two. And they still ran, but it doesn't matter then. That's the thing about speed. You don't have to hit to be productive. If you have to hit to be productive, I mean, you actually have to make contact with the ball. A power hitter for the long ball with speed, not so. Two and one to count. <laughs> right field view of Lombardozzi and you can see the throw going to hit him right in the back with Lombardozzi there to catch it again if that throws a little bit more towards center field you're going to have a bang bang play two balls one strike on Tommy Herr four nothing Cardinals one out bottom of the seventh ripped into shallow left center field actually a looper 
off the handle, and it's caught by Gagne for the second out. Jimmy, you're an ex-catcher. What does it feel like when you know they're going to run and you can't do much about it? Well, you feel like you are you're antsy trying to come out of the crouch a little bit too quickly. You start doing things that you can't do. Your footwork speeds up, and usually the body is in front of the arm. You start dragging the arm through. You start doing a lot of things that you're not capable of doing. It's like trying to hit a five-run homer or like trying to strike a guy out on one pitch, things like that. Meanwhile, Rourke got on the phone to the bullpen, and again, Whitey now with a 4 nothing lead and maybe thinking about Danny Cox and trying to conserve as much as he can. Strike. 0-1. So Worrell gets up and so does Daly. Daly the lefty. Dan Dreesen. 0-2 the count. There is Danny Cox. Seven shutout innings. Boy, does he respond to big games or what? Well, I guess game two wasn't a big game. You know, they're supposed to win in Minnesota, but here, when we told you how great they play there, this was a big game, and he pitched fantastic. Out of play. Well, it's easy to say if you look at seven shutout innings, but if you sat at home and watched how he got those seven shutout innings, you know it was a struggle. He battled them all the way. It was one of those games when you go out there with that 90 mile per hour fastball and everyone's on the corner and every slider's low and away. He pitched. Toward the hole, Gagne is there. Plants throws. No, too late. And the third is Smith. Dreesen, for an elder statesman, still run fairly well. When he first came up, he was very fast. A good pitch if you're going to hit it to the left side to get out of the box. You can see him out of his front foot. Timmy said in the first game, that's one of Gagney's strength to be able to plant. Look out, out to me. Yeah, he was out. He did. Yes, sir. One of the few calls I don't agree with in this World Series. Umpires have done a good job. Have not it. As we talked to Kenny Kaiser, really been an obtrusive factor. They've just done their jobs. And yeah, the only argument was I Whitey talking about Lyle Levin walking. As McGee fouls it back in the count on one. So Dreesen with an infield single. Runners at first and third. Two down, bottom of the seventh inning. Four nothing St. Louis. Smith to his lead at third. Dreesen held by Herbeck at first. 0 oh 2. Willie tonight has been stymied, grounded out, struck out twice, but he still has seven hits, seven for 18 in the series. But a tough time through his career, facing Reardon, who, of course, in the National League was with the Mets, and then the Expos. Fouled away, 0-2. The point you made about Dreesen getting down there quickly for an elder statesman. If you don't have a job, you get signed to a Triple A co contract in early June, and you find yourself in a World Series. It'll make you a couple of steps quicker. Got that right. <laughs> and McGee is gone on strikes. So the Cardinals in the seventh inning are done, but they pick up another run. Two hits, leave a couple. To the eighth we go. 4 nothing, St. Louis in game five. I'm here for some straight talk about the stock market. It's important to everyone. It provides capital that creates jobs to make America grow. Emotions can run high during market turbulence, just when reason should prevail. We are confident in the markets. We've stayed active in them for all investors. America's economy is the strongest in the world with great ability to bounce back. At Merrill Lynch, we're still bullish on America. There are facts about quality Pennzoil motor oil you should know. Fact. Pennzoil is the number one choice of import car owners in America. Fact. 
Penzo is also the number one choice among small engine car rotors, import and American. For a longer lasting car engine, using the right quality motor oil is the smartest thing you can do. And that's why more import and American small engine car owners use Pennzoil. Pennzoil, the standard of protection since 1889. I'm scrunching in my mouth. It's super good. In McDonald's, we're tossing salads fresh all day, every day. The chef salad is super. The ham, the cheese, the turkey. You name it, it's got it here. I could run in and get a salad, and kids could get hamburgers. The chicken salad oriental. It's just like my grandmother would make. Look at these big pieces of chicken. Look at that. And it's always been fresh any time of day. It's so fresh. What more could you want? Tossed fresh all day. Make, 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 make McDonald's salad. I'm going to eat a lot of them. <laughs> I'll get it, Alex. Mel's Market. Here's your order. What order? Side of beef. I didn't order. Here's your delivery, sir. What delivery? Your Stroh's 30 packs. Stroh's. Alex? Nah. Stroh's and Stroh Light. Fire brewed for smooth, consistent taste. And with 30 packs, you get more beer. Pardon. Gears that shop. Here's your poodle. Oh. Alex. This ABC Sports exclusive is being brought to you by Aetna and its agents and brokers across America. Work with the best in the business, Aetna. Al Michaels with Jim Palmer, Tim McCarver, Danny Cox working on a shutout as we go to the eighth inning. 4 nothing, St. Louis as they try to take a three games to two lead in the World Series. You know, looking back, remember when Okendo was thrown out on the aborted squeeze and then the double play? It goes into the books as a caught stealing. Would you like to guess the last guy to steal home in a World Series game? Take a guess, Jim. Jackie Robinson. Take another guess. Think about it for a minute. Think about it, and we'll give you the answer shortly. Eighth inning, Dan Gladden at the plate, and it's up high, ball one. Gladden, Gagne, and Puckett, 4 nothing, St. Louis. Well, no, it wasn't me. No, it definitely <laughs> wasn't you. McCarver, my partner? Believe it or not. Another groaner. There, there's, <laughs> this is a groaner, As a I'll matter of fact, <laughs> if you can believe it, 1964, a steal of home, a throw through to second, and there's McCarver crossing the plate. Tail end of a double steal, big deal. <laughs> Meanwhile, Gladden with a base hit into right field. But who would have thunk it? You know who the lead runner was? Mike Shannon, who is now the broadcaster with the Cardinals. Oh, what a speedy pair that was, huh? <laughs> Well, you did lead the National League in triples one year. I, mean, I remember that from the 85 World Series. Big ballpark or what? It was, 19, it was this ballpark, yeah. With grass. Mm -hmm. Keep tossing me bones, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, when are you going to tell everybody I walked with the bases loaded? They pitched around me in the 70 World Series for my hitting ability. Gagney at the plate with nobody out. Gladden at first base in the eighth inning. 4 nothing St. Louis. And Ozzie Smith now going to the mound in the bullpen. Again, it's the righty Worrell and the lefty Daly. Whitey Herzog knows he has John Tudor for game six. And if he needs a game seven starter, he's thinking about Cox. He, of course, he'd have McGrain if he wanted to go with a lefty, but it's highly unlikely in a seventh game. Another strike in the count, one and one. Well, he has Greg Matthews, but I talked to Mike Rourke today, and he said, I've went over to him right now and said, can you pitch? He said, of course. But uh, the three-quarter throwing on the side doesn't get him ready for the games, and we found that out last night. So you're looking at McGrain or possibly the bullpen. Matthews came everybody, in everybody. Two starts early. That's sure. right. Ricky Horton's a good, another good choice because left-handers have matched up very well. Bunted, and it's a good one, and it's a base hit. So the Twins 
not rolling over. Have runners at first and second and nobody out. As Gladden starts with a single, Gagne gets a bunt single, and up comes Kirby Puckett. Well, great play because you're 0 for 3. You see where Kendall's playing way behind the bag. He's giving you the bunt, and you take it. The only problem is executing, and uh, he, as you can see from that cam camera angle, he did it perfectly. Mike Rourke trotting to the mound. Herzog would make the move, so this is just a visit. Tell you, and we brought it up last night. It is a credit to this ball club that they keep coming back like they do. The Tigers had them down five to nothing in Game Three of the ALCS. They ended up beating the Tigers four out of five. They came back to take a six-five lead, and as you said last night, Pat Sheridan's home run. The loudest hit that the Tigers had that whole series. But the one thing you can't escape from is that they played about 32 games the second half on the road. And they won nine of those. And then you get to the yes, well, San Francisco in the seventh and fourth game. A six-nothing shutout. So there, it looks like they're going to give an opportunity to, to really, at least at this point, to get into the eighth or maybe through the eighth, depending on what happens. They just haven't played well on the road, a point about Minnesota. They did it against Detroit, winning two out of three, but now they've lost two in a row and are looking at another one. Whitey might be thinking here, Cox pitches to Puckett, Daly comes in to face Herbeck, and then he goes with Worrell. Right. That's a fly ball to center field. McGee is there, and that's the first out. So one away, and now Kim Herbeck comes up. Herbeck is one for three. You know, once again, where do you go when you need a good pitch to puck it? You go inside because he's swinging at a ball. That ball is about six inches off the plate. And it's as Rick Rennick, one of the coaches, said, when he's hot, he can hit that pitch. But he's not hot. Meanwhile, here comes Whitey, and as we suspected, he was going to face one more man, and he's going to bring in the lefty. He's going to bring... Daly in here. He's also going to make a double switch, bringing Lindemann in to play first base. As he tells Ken Kaiser exactly what he'll do. So Daly will come in to face Herbeck. Then you'll probably see Worrell to face Gaiety. And we'll be back. You mad, Dad? Look, I didn't drive. Terrific. You're drinking an underage. But I called. Well, that's a contract we signed. We'll talk tomorrow. You are mad. Greg, I'm scared. Scared of losing you. Your mom and me, we love you too much to lose you. The Students Against Driving Drunk Contract for Life Saves Lives. It's available from Aetna. The advanced new Chevy half-ton is all new. Ford isn't. And the advantages stack up. Chevy gives you new two-tier loading. Ford doesn't. More two-sided galvanized steel. A bigger, heavier frame. And on top of it all, more standard power with Vortec V6. Want a load of new features? Test drive the first all-new full-size pickup introduced in this decade. The heartbeat of America. The advanced new full-size Chevy. That's today's Chevy truck. You can depend on AT&T Long Distance thanks to the remarkable people who put our equipment to the test. I love wrecking things. This is a special laboratory. Here we create disasters. One disaster right after another. Why do we do all this? Once we understand how these things can destroy long distance service, we can build equipment that'll stand up to it. We're reaching further to bring your world closer. Yeah, the storm's over. AT&T, the right choice. Take me back where I belong. Take me where it's safe and warm. The Goodyear Vector is the all-season radial that pumps water away to keep more tire tread on the road. And for some, that's a comforting thought. Take me home. Goodyear, take me home. Never matters how far I go. Goodyear, take me home. Danny Cox, and what an ovation he got as he walked off the mound. Natural sound. So there he is, Danny Cox, who very well may, could be back on the mound on Sunday. 
as Ken Daly now comes in. Daly, last night, came on in relief in the seventh inning. Worked two and two-thirds innings, faced one man over the minimum. Gave up a single to Don Baylor, and that was that. Very impressive, came in and got Gaetti out on a strikeout, and then Brunanski to pop up. An amazing story, the ligament transplant from the right wrist to the left elbow came back since last October to have a 9-5 and five year, his best year for the Cardinals. So Herbeck now at the play takes outside. 4-0 Cardinals, eighth inning with one out. Minnesota has Gladden at second and Gagne at first. Routine for McGee. Two guys. Gaetti, now Herzog, now Worrell. And the Cardinals are four outs away. Uh-huh, yes, yes, Mrs. Ferber, I'll be right over. What's up? It's Alex. He's been burying things in Mrs. Ferber's garden again. Right here. Mm -hmm. Alex, a bottle of Stroh's. Keep digging. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nice, Alex. 15 pack. Keep digging. With Stroh's and Stroh Light 15 and 30 packs, you get more beer. How did he get a whole truck down there? Why don't we ask the driver? <laughs> the outlook for financial markets is encouraging. Interest rates are now declining, and the fear of significantly higher inflation seems unwarranted. Government officials appear ready to achieve stability in the dollar. This is good news. And the message from the financial markets to policymakers is clear. Address the budget and trade deficits. At Merrill Lynch, we are confident, indeed optimistic, about the resiliency of the financial markets and the environment ahead for investors. Here's to the winners, those who move mountains. Here's to the miracles they make us see. Holiday Inn welcomes you, the people who know that winning at life is working hard at it and living it fully day after day. Here's to the winners, all of us can be. Holiday Inn salutes you. Here's to the winners. We're on your way. Hey, where did you learn about computers? In the Army. You were in the Army, too? Qualify for the GI Bill and the Army College Fund, hey, and you can earn that? over $25,000 for college. What you do in the Army? Airborne. You used to jump out of airplanes? Lie down. Bend over backwards. Stand up. Now, disappear. The new Duracell Flip Pocket Light. Big man out of the pen, Todd Worrell, working on Gary Gaetti with two out and two on in the top of the eighth inning, 4 nothing St. Louis. Gaetti is 0 for 3. Worrell, the rookie of the year in 86. Sort of an amazing thing when you think about it. Worrell, who throws so hard, there's Lindemann, the first baseman. Todd, the rookie of the year last year, before he was classified as a rookie, he'd come up in 85. By the end of the year, he was the ace of the bullpen. He pitched in the World Series. He struck out six in a row, a series mark. He was also involved in that disputed play on the Orta ground ball at first. He did all those things before he was a rookie, only because he didn't pitch the minimum number of innings. One and one. And then when he became a rookie, he led the league in saves. Yeah. And an off year this year, only 33. Now, this is about 98 miles per hour. This is one of his strengths, getting the ball away. The other night, he came in on Gaetti, and that's the controversial play, the line drive that Okendo snagged. Controversial in the sense that we didn't think he should be playing down the line, and he's not playing there tonight. And it's one and two. On top of all that you said, he was the first pitcher to be named the Rookie of the Year after pitching in a World Series. He had a whole career before yeah. he was a rookie. 
very confident. Said the more he works, the better he feels. So he yeah. fits tonight. Game six if needed. Game seven if you need me then too. Can play right field. Another thing he did before he was a rookie, he was the winner in the pen and clincher against the Dodgers in the playoffs and Clark hit the home run. One two pitch coming up. Two and two. Tony Pena would, might need a chiropractor tomorrow after that. I mean, he's rubbery, but that, that tested him. Well, it's an idea of how hard Warrell is throwing. A catcher like this catches it in the web, and look at the momentum that Pena had. Caught that one by the seat of his pants. A normal human at six cracked vertebrae. To center field and deep, very deep. McGee goes all the way back. Leaps and has it. And then it comes out of his glove, so it's in play. And Gaetti winds up at third. It looked like Willie was going to be able to come up with the ball. And all of a sudden, it came loose. So the Twins pick up two and have Gaetti at third. As McGee goes all the way back and can't hold on. It appeared that the ball hit the heel of the glove. A lot of times outfielders expect it. Yep, it hit the heel of the glove, then rolled around and then came out. Go back to the wall. You can see his right hand feeling for it. Doesn't quite get all the way to the wall, but you can see him pushing himself. And right here, big glove. Sometimes useful, not on that play. Ball came right out of it. Oh, that's an amazing picture. He never had control of it. It's a three-run home run in the Metrodome. It's only 408 feet. Well, you just think about it. The heel of the hand is the hardest part of the hand. And the heel of the hand in the glove, that's the hardest part. And that's how the balls get jarred out of the glove. Rarely in the webbing. Unless, of course, you run into the wall. And the wall had nothing to do with that play. Two-run triple. 4-2. Another look. Talking about gloves, one of the great center fielders that I played with, for that exact reason, took the heel out of his glove. So therefore, all he had was pretty much Webb. Paul Makes Blair. a lot of sense, Paul Blair. In fact, all the great players that I played with, Brooks Robinson, Mark Belanger, guys that won gold gloves, if you look at Willie McGee, had small gloves. They used to really have, almost have a pocket where if the ball got into it, very hard to get it out of it. Like a cesto on it. 1-1 one, one is outside, 2-1 on Brunanski, who represents the tying run. Gaetti at third, two down. Think about the hitting of Gaetti, and I'm sure Tom Kelly happy. The other night, he almost turned Okendo over with that line drive off Warrell, and now he takes him deep to center field on the mm. fastball away. Mm. Two and two. Meanwhile, Joe McGrain is throwing in the St. Louis bullpen. Just and no also way. Rick Horton. If you look at the, the really the two left-handers, Horton on the right, McGrain on the left. No way you can look for a 2-1 slider when a guy's throwing 98 miles per hour, and yet he came back with it. And that's what Gaddy's home triple will do. 2-2 two, two to Bernanski. Full count. Bernanski, 32 home runs on the year, and they've pitched them great in this series. They have thrown the breaking ball down in the way, hardly giving them any balls in the middle of the plate to drive. You're wondering, 3-2, what Worrell will do. Will he come after him? In the air to center. Playable for McGee, and that's that. But the Twins have the lead. Get two after seven and a half. St. Louis four, Minnesota two. Peter said I could have anything I wanted. So I took his Van Heusen shirt right off his back. Van Heusen, for a man to wear and a woman to borrow. Really, Norton, you'd think you'd never had ice cream before. Oops. There's only one camera system you can buy that lets you hold the picture in your hand <laughs> while you still hold the feeling in your heart. The Polaroid Spectra system. Reach out and touch somebody's hand 
Now, every time you use MasterCard, we'll donate money to six worthy causes. Look for the balance and help choose where the money goes. Reach out and touch somebody's hand. Choose to make a difference. Choose MasterCard. Sir, hmm. would you choose hamburger A, a Wendy's hamburger that's made fresh, or B, one made earlier so it's dry? B, because it's dry, like Mom used to make. I remember as a boy, she'd make dry roast beef, dry gravy, the driest turkey ever tasted, and then stuffing, dry as a bone. And on birthdays, it would take eight or nine glasses of milk just to wash down the cake, you know? But most people don't like dry food. Yeah? Maybe that's why Dad left. <laughs> most people like the taste of hot and juicy hamburgers, like Wendy's, the best burgers in the business. For the first winter ever, there's actually an antifreeze that will guarantee your radiator. The antifreeze? New Prestone Advanced Formula. Use it after using Prestone Super Flush. And should our protection fail, no matter which model car you have, we'll pay for your radiator repairs. New Prestone Advanced Formula. The antifreeze that guarantees your radiator. Well, the McGee still can't believe it. Neither could the crowd, and we called it as a catch initially because with the naked eye, that's exactly what it looked like. But it rolls around and comes on out. It does everything right except catch the ball. It gets back. I think the momentum of, of really trying to go back in the ball makes his glove hit the wall, and then you can see right there it, the whiplash of the glove. Disappointed, frustrated, because what it's done, really, and not be shooting that he should have catch it, is put the Twins back in the ball game. And the crowd response was for a spectacular catch, uh -huh. and then almost in disbelief, what's the ball doing rolling back toward the infield? Yeah, it would have been a terrific catch if he comes up with it. Mm. Bottom of the eighth inning. Ford to lead off. Ford, Okendo, and Pena with Reardon working. 4-2 Cardinals. When the Twins bat in the ninth inning, they were at the bottom of the order. They are 7-8-9. The spots occupied right now by Lodner, Lombardozzi, and Reardon. And on the bench, left-handed batters, they have Smalley, who's the switch hitter, Randy Bush, and also the switch hitting Newman strike. On the other side, they've got Don Baylor, the right-handed batter, and Mark Davidson. One ball, one strike. The puck in and center. One gone. Third baseman, Jose. Ford is out number one, and Jose Okendo is the batter. Okendo, two for three. Okendo thrown out twice. Once coming home late, Gagney throwing him out on a ground ball off the bat of Coleman and the other time thrown out when Cox struck out on a two-strike bunt and he was caught off third on the squeeze attempt. Oh and one. Jose Okendo. What a godsend he's been for Whitey Herzog, especially the way things turned out. Late in the year, they can do so many things with him, and he's been alternating between right and third in the World Series. And he also alternates between right and left sides of the plate also. And it's an interesting story about how he became a switch hitter. We talked earlier about Jim Fergosi, who was the manager of the Louisville Cardinals, a AAA affiliate, a couple of years ago. Whitey Herzog and the Cardinals played an exhibition game down in Louisville. And Jose at the time was batting 190, and Whitey said, Jim, if he's going to hit 190, he might as well do it as a switch hitter. If you remember, he was a switch hitter. He tried it for the Mets, but it was on the big league level. And Okendo got on strike, so two down here in the eighth inning, and painted the batter. There are a lot of things you could do in the minor leagues where you don't go through all the pressures and rigors of having to win. 
Because in effect, that's really what the minor leagues are. They're a training ground to win in the big leagues. And develop players. Right. Didn't hit enough or he'd probably still be with the Mets. Apparently Davy Johnson did not think that, if you look at Joe McRain, didn't think he was going to hit. A lot of people think that he could be one of the better shortstops in the National League, but not playing that position, nor will he here in St. Louis unless you pinch hit or you take him out and rest to Smith. Two out, bases empty, strike to Pena. Should note, by the way, talking to Herzog before the game, he got a telegram last night. You know, the fans are always sending telegrams with advice. He got one last night that said before the game, don't play lawless. <laughs> Kelly got one that said, we're behind you all the way. Let's do lunch, signed by three secretaries in Minneapolis. Of course, Tom is very happily married with two children. It's unusual that they say, do lunch in Minneapolis. That's what I was thinking. I mean, that's, that's an L.A. term, isn't it? They must have heard you and uh, Steve Zabriskie <laughs> when you did about 15 minutes during the summer. There's Lawless. No balls, two strikes to count on Pena. Toward the middle, and by Gagne, Pena's hit. So Pena tonight with three hits. Tony now has six hits in the series and 16 at-bats. And Jim Lindemann, when he came into the game, remember they made the double switch with Daly, so Lindemann came into the nine spot of the order. Well, this makes batting instructor Johnny Lewis so happy because in this big ballpark for the Cardinals to be successful, they don't want to hit fly balls. If they do, they're going to be caught. They're not home run hitting. So you top spin them. Even Bly Levin, after about 15 outs, nine of them were on ground balls. So they have been hitting the ball on the ground all night long. And they have four runs to show for it. Tonight, for instance, and to reinforce your point, they have made three outs in the air to the outfield. Three. You know, Pena checking his foot. The reason for the delay. On the subject of Lawless, how about another look? Amazing that the day and age we live in, I said, what'd you do last night? I said, well, we have a lot of family and friends, and we go back to the the hotel together and turn on the cable and we watch it. He said, it's like I'm out of my body. It's not me doing this. Great thing about that picture. Where did the bat land? The bat never came down. It's like Jesse Orozco's glove last year when the Mets won it. Right. Things like that never just, come down. They just, stay up there. They stayed up. Lance yeah. Johnson, meanwhile, will run for Pena. So Tony has to come out. And the good news for Herzog is that tomorrow's an off day. Is that anything more than a very minor little sprain? And that means it should be Steve Lake coming in to catch in the ninth inning. They also have Tom Pagnazzi as a catcher. Strike in the count 0 and 1. And the report we're getting from the bench is hamstring, right hamstring for Pena. Gene Gieselman right there to check it out. Johnson goes, Lindemann swings and misses, and the throw is too late. So Lance Johnson, yet another typical Cardinal rookie, speed, singles hitter. As a matter of fact, this is his first appearance in the World Series, and on the second pitch, he gets a stolen base. The only player on either side not to be in a ball game yet, John Morris with the Cardinals. Really haven't had a chance to use John Morris, whose strength is coming off the bench as a pinch hitter. Cardinals with five. As Johnson makes it five, but Lindemann strikes out and can't cash him in. So the lead is still two as we go to the ninth. Hi, I'm Charles Seaver, builder and artist. My little brother Tom is a major league pitcher, a strikeout artist. So a lot of investment firms would love to help him manage his money. But I found a firm that's happy to help people like you and me too, Dean Witter. They're helping me plan for my children's education and my retirement. Maybe I haven't won 300 games, but Dean Witter always treats me like an all-star. You're somebody at Dean Witter. A member of the Sears Financial Network.
Every day at 7 a.m., over 6 million people wake up ready to battle plaque, armed with Listerine. Listerine reduces plaque by up to 50% over brushing alone. For better oral hygiene, fight the battle against plaque and bad breath with Listerine. Winter allergies and colds. The sneezing and congestion can make you feel miserable. For relief, discover Benadryl decongestant. Combining Benadryl with the decongestant found in the leading cold medication. Benadryl decongestant. Every day, over 30 million AT&T calls go through on the first try. Thanks to a remarkably intelligent network that forecasts traffic, anticipates tie-ups, and determines the quickest way around them. All in less time than it takes to dial. The AT&T network, you can call it the mastermind of long distance. Glad I got through. We're reaching further to bring your world closer. AT&T, the right choice. Radio Shack's Sale Price Tandy 1000 TX brings the gift of a true high-speed business computer to your home affordably. PC compatible, easy to use, with seven ready-to-run programs for the family. Keep a budget, write term papers, even create graphics or learn music. Save $250 on the high-speed Tandy 1000 TX, color monitor included, only $1249. Tandy computers, because there is no better gift value. Only at Radio Shack. Michaels with Jim Palmer and Tim McCarver, Game 5 of the World Series. The St. Louis Cardinals on top by a score of 4-2, to and Al Newman to pinch hit for Tim Lodner, who was 0-2 for tonight. And what Kelly's doing here, down by 2, Lodner is the all-or-nothing type hitter, strikes out a lot, has power. Steve Lake is the new catcher, he needs a base runner. So Newman comes up and takes a strike. And he also would rather have a left-handed batter up there. And he's got Roy Smalley on deck and Randy Bush probably in the hold to hit against Todd Worrell. Smalley to bat for Lombardozzi. One ball, one strike to count. And as my old skipper would say, you can't get in trouble until somebody gets on. And that's what Todd Worrell wants to avoid. Jeff Reardon, by the way, came in face five, hitter struck out three, so he's situated for game six and seven. Got some work. Routine for her. One guy. Lombardozzi is the batter. Lombardozzi do up, and of course it's Smalley to bat for him. And then Bush out on deck. So Smalley hitting here with one out of the bases empty in the ninth. Gene Gieselman and 
Nick Leva, Mike Ward, and Herzog. Tom Kelly. Trying to get the tying run to the plate if Smalley can get on. Three and two. We talked about it the other night. That's one of the things that has changed in the game. If you're going to take all the way 2-0, and oh, why wouldn't you take 3-1? and one? You're going to get the same pitch 3-2 that you got 3-1. And the 3-1 pitch in the process may be a ball. 3-2 to Smalley. Excuse me, Jim. The Twins are so dominant at home, they may, may be the only team in World si Series history going back home down by a game and thinking they have an edge. Mm -hmm. I think they really believe that. Kirby Bucket. Smalley, who doubled off Worrell as a pinch hitter Sunday night, fouling a couple away and hanging in. Three and two. Pitch the borderline pitch 3 1 that you take, but maybe a ball you can't afford to do 3 2. So, to make your job trying to get on base, if you look at an anxious Tom Brudansky, much more difficult. And Smalley is on, so he's able to work Worrell for a walk, and the Twins will get the tying run to the plate. And Randy Bush comes up to hit for Reardon. And it was Randy Bush with a big two-run double in game two. As part of that six-run fourth inning. On a changeup. Third consecutive one, and when Morrell got him out to end the game, really end the, I guess, the, the bottom of the eighth the other night in the Metrodome, what did he get him out on a changeup? And he had a real good swing at it. I would think he'd stay with the hard stuff, make him hit the ball to the fat part of the park here at Bush Stadium. One and oh. Lindemann at first base playing Smalley. Way behind him. No, no idea about holding him on. You go on the theory that Smalley's run is no good. Cardinals up by two. And now it's Mike Rourke again to talk to Todd. Probably more about mechanics than the fact that Randy Bush hit 11 home runs. And they've already gone over those scouting reports. And... Uh, Looks to me that he's having more mechanical problems than knowing where to pitch him. New catcher, though. You know, Tony Pena with a hamstring. You have Steve Lake in there. A little bit different uh, target. Not, certainly not as low as Pena. He's down. He won't be in this situation with somebody on if he was catching. But see Jim Lindemann playing behind Roy Smalley, Smalley playing percentage baseball. Kind of cut away that hole. at the plate. You want him to be aggressive. Certainly want him to swing at strikes. One and two. On deck is Glad. Strikes on Bush. Looks like Greg Nettles a little bit, doesn't he? Yeah, somewhat. Not to me. I threw about 10 home runs to Nettles. <laughs> it looks like Randy Bush to me. <laughs> One and two the count. Three plus 
across a wall. Two gone. Smalley at first. Tying run at the plate.
Bond's information bouncing off a satellite is not exactly front page news. But when it's headlines and pictures, ball scores and stock prices, that is new. And it's all going from a Contel satellite to nationwide printing plants. On time, every time. If you have news to get out, Contel can help you too. For Contel, I'm Chuck Ness. Better you can. Now, every time you use MasterCard, we'll donate money to six worthy causes. Look for the balance and help choose where the money goes. Reach out and touch somebody's hand. Choose to make a difference. Choose MasterCard. The test of a great airline is not just how fast it moves you in the air but how fast it moves you on the ground. That's why at some of the busiest airports in the world, United Airlines offers you the most advanced baggage systems, faster ticketing and boarding procedures, and the most spacious, convenient, efficient terminals in the business. United Airlines, from the ground up, rededicated to giving you the service you deserve. Come fly the friendly skies. Here we go, a hula hoop. What would you do for a Klondike bar? Would you try a hula hoop for a Klondike? Can I do something else? Not if you want the Klondike. Hey, you're pretty good. There's something wrong with this hula hoop. I don't think it's the hula hoop, sir. Y you got it. <laughs> and so do you, sir. Mm -hmm. For that chocolate-coated ice cream loaded big and thick, no room for sticks. What would you do for a Klondike bar? Sure, everybody's good at this part. Sports and Major League Baseball present the official 1987 World Series highlight video cassette. All the dramatic moments, exclusive interviews, and special camera coverage. Send 1998 by check, pay three dollars for postage and handling, or use Visa or Mastercard. Call 1-800-4-ABC-VCR. The preceding announcement was furnished by Major League Baseball. This telecast presented by authority of Major League Baseball may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form without the express written consent of Major League Baseball. Tom Kelly is with us after the game and he's with Reggie Jackson. Reggie. Thank you very much, Al. Not a fun job being a manager at a time like this, but Tom Kelly, you get to go home. That's right, Reg. We're going back now. Uh, we played a good ball game tonight. Uh, one bad inning where uh, Herbie misplayed a ball and then Gagne misplayed a ball. Uh, they only hit two balls out of the infield and end up with three runs, but, you know, we battled back and we had a chance to tie the game and go ahead in the ninth, but, uh, you know, they give credit to the Cardinals. Cox pitched an outstanding game and, and Worrell. So uh, we got to come back, uh, back at the Metrodome, do the best job we possibly can, and uh, we'll be ready. Who's going to pitch for you Saturday? Well, Lester Straker did an outstanding job the other day for us, and uh, he's going to get the ball on Saturday. Why has your ball club had so many problems on the road? Well, I think it's basically just the tough pitching. Uh, Cox, outstanding. Let Tudor's been outstanding. Uh, yesterday, uh, they didn't pitch as well as, uh, you know, they can. And we only managed a few hits and runs. I I'm having trouble finding out the reason why. Nobody seems to know a reason. Question for you again, my, ultimate, my last question. If Les Straker pitches, pitches six good shutout innings again, what will you do? Well, I think we're going to yank him out of there. It's, uh, I'm not going to go against our philosophies. We've, we've seen him pitch all year like you have, and uh, he gets five or six good innings in him, and the seventh inning, he seems to fall apart. Uh, we'll see where we're at and how he's throwing the ball, and we'll make our decisions then, but we get start to get nervous about the sixth. Go back to the Mets or Dome, where you're obviously going to be the favorite. We'll see what happens up there Saturday afternoon. Back to Al Michaels. Okay, Reggie, and we'll see what happens at 3.30 Eastern time. So that's the story from Bush Stadium. Al Michaels, Jim Palmer, Tim McCarver, Reggie Jackson, good night from St. Louis. The final score, Cards 4, Twins 2, and the Cards lead three games to two. Join us Saturday for ABC's College Football. Most of you will see a Big Ten matchup, Purdue taking on Iowa, followed by Game 6 of the World Series live from Minneapolis, and it all begins noon Eastern time. Those of you on the West Coast will see Game 6 of the World Series first. And then California against UCLA in college football. And our coverage begins at 12.30 Pacific time. 
Game 5 of the 1987 World Series has been brought to you by Merrill Lynch. By Chevrolet, the official car and truck of Major League Baseball. By Strohs and Stroh Light. Now you're talking good times and Strohs is spoken here. And by United Airlines, we're dedicated to giving you the service you deserve. Come fly the friendly skies of United. Stay tuned for your local news. That ABC News Nightline. Ted Koppel focuses on the presidential press conference and will be joined by George Goodman, senior reporter of Money Magazine. Our Emmett Terrell, editor-in-chief of the American Spectator, and Michael Gartner, editor of the Eames Daily Tribune. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as a leader in sports television. See you Saturday.